man, right, well, I've been I've been looking forward to this one. Yeah. actually, we we as soon as we started it, we we're like, man, it'd be awesome to get Swoop on. That so was the like, first thing we said. I'm, uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm flattered. I'm very flattered. Well, you've got, actually we said Dave, and then he shot us down. So we're like, <laughs> <laughs> Swoop would be really cool too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, you've got one of the most unique uh, stories, um, kind of in sports, like like ever. Like it's yeah. got to be up there. Um, and uh, like just to kind of give everybody a rundown. Um, you're a basketball player essentially your whole life, and then somehow you finish <laughs> your basketball college career and you jump right into the NFL, which is uh, you know crazy. You, yeah, <laughs> you've done a few a little stint in the NFL, and <laughs> you're training now. And uh, you know, I don't even know where to start because, like, for you, you're so uh, like you've got it all together. Like, you've got your nutrition like dialed. I always see you eating like good food, like yeah. nice Thanks. meal prep. <laughs> You're in like good shape. You can tell you've like you stayed grinding, stayed working, yeah. and like it's not like new stuff. You're not you're not motivated. You're like you're really disciplined. It's this discipline. Yeah. Um, so it's like you know I don't. You know, do we start with how in the hell do you play basketball? <laughs> yeah, your just life? get in the NFL. Yeah. Or? or do we start with all the like? You, I Let's, know you've uh, got like you're just gonna be a gold mine of uh, like training and nutrition uh, information as well. Yeah. So. Uh, do you have we a preference? Just, uh, Where do you want to start? You can just introduce uh, yourself first. Yeah. And, uh, Let's start there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll I go can, from there. Yeah, give us a little rundown. Who, who's we'll there? A little too excited about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay, well, uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> My name is Eric Swope. i born and raised in Southern California. I had the blessing of going to an awesome high school I'm very proud of called Harvard Westlake School. And that's kind of where all of what you guys see today is what it is. So that's kind of where my, I'll say my journey hit its peak in terms of tapping into process. So is that, it's like a, uh, like kind of like a private school or like a, yeah. a big sports development academy? No, is so like? this is a academic, <laughs> <laughs> Carry the, name the Harvard, hardest usually. academic experience I've ever oh, had. Yeah. And it was just a place where if you have a talent, they try and push it. Whatever it is, I mean, it could be any. I mean, there was kids when I was there that were making iPhone apps when Apple was like just making phones. It was kids that were designing surgical gloves. They were selling that to major hospitals. I mean, oh. like ground earth shattering type of stuff for the type of kids that I was around. And the coolest thing when I learned there is if there's something you want to do, do it. Just put everything you have into it. That's so awesome. that was kind of where my sports journey my life journey had this huge kind of like explosion right. of let me tap into what does it mean to be essentially successful because so i grew up in a city called lake elsinore um it's a suburb about halfway down between san diego and la awesome place um and i was playing I started tra playing travel basketball, I think, at 11. So at 11, I'm already traveling around the world playing basketball. Or not around the world, excuse me, around the country yeah. playing basketball. And um, make a couple friends from L.A. So I start actually driving, uh, let's just say, 80 miles to practice three times a week. That's a good wow. commute right there. Love yeah. my family. <laughs> they <laughs> they believed in me, and, and we can get to that when we get there. Yeah. But um, Came across a couple of friends that told me about this school. Hey, let's, there's this, if you like, if you like academics, like really like <laughs> academics, <laughs> there's this place in LA that for some reason is not very spoke of or talked about. And you go through a full college application style process, entrance exams, interviews, the whole nine yards. And you go there and meet kids. I mean, it's, it's a middle school and a high school, but. I was going in the high school portion, which is more rare there. They like to kind of build you all the way up. But you go there, and this is a chance basically to set yourself up for the rest of your life. I had no idea. Of course, you're, I'm 13, going on 14 right. years old. I'm like, sure, I just want to play varsity yeah. basketball, yeah. and we'll, we'll figure the rest out. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, you don't know uh, how important, you know, that time of your life is like we talk we've talked a little bit about like your developmental period like mm -hmm. in athleticism but we, yeah. we've not really spoke on it uh, like from a mental standpoint yeah your education yeah but um like kids it's they're so uh 
impressionable and you know we you hear that all the time but we don't i don't feel like we really look at that for what it is it like impressionable means like you can turn this person into what they're going to be or you can like teach them ways to be successful and like like getting in a school like that is going to challenge a kid and like push them and then show them like seeing kids develop apps and like (laughs) like products to sell like like, cost like that's crazy like and when you see kids that can do that like you're i mean what you think you can do like as an adult like it's going to be infinite like you see someone your age and you know your parents are smarter than you but kids can do this so what can i do as an adult exactly there's no limits in that in that who like so uh like did your parents present the idea of the school to you it was your buddy so it was my buddies so my and they're still my best friends this day Uh, My buddy Mike and Austin, we were playing together. We were actually rivals for a bit. And then we all kind of joined in trying to make like the best Southern California team we could. And um, they were the ones that presented the idea to me personally. And then the conversation led to my family. And um, to go there at the time, tuition was 27 grand. So we already knew uh, if you don't have a scholarship opportunity, it's not Not happening. (laughs) It's not even an option. But I, at the time I humored him was like, yeah, sure. Let's just see where this goes. And I had to take like a interest exam course to learn how to take like the standardized six hour exam. Jeez. I mean, it was like, how old were you? This was 13. I mean, this is like 13 going on 14. Six hour exam. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it was, I could barely do that when I was 18. <laughs> to I don't know if I can do it now. <laughs> ACT, I'm like, it's switching my face. Like, I may like have peaked pregnant. when I was 13 with a one hour exam because like three minutes right now is yeah, like, like pushing. Oh, these two caps are a breeze, baby. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking six hour test. Wow. Well, yeah. Right. It was, uh, I remember it because I didn't know what I was getting into. So I, you know, learned a little bit of the information, took the test, and was just like, so. Did it go well? Yeah, what, what like, now? you know, I have, I have no idea that this actually has like real weight on where my journey was going. And then my buddies basically told me, so if you get accepted, you get a big box. If you don't get accepted, you just get a letter in the mail. Oh. So for the next, let's just, I don't remember specifically, but let's just say for the next about six to eight weeks, it was just like checking the front door. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I came back from a basketball tournament. There's your box. There's a box. Oh, man. And like, how does that feel? It was, it felt like I had won the lottery and I still didn't even know what I was getting <laughs> right. into. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I still had no idea. Awesome, but... Yeah, I just knew like something good is going to come of this because yeah. to everyone I'm around and to the, to those that I trust, I'm being told this is a very big deal. Right. And, uh, but the first thing was we lived in Lake Elsinore. The school was in North Hollywood. That's 90 miles. Yeah. So I was like, so where do we go from here? So my older brother, I just have one sibling, my older brother, Devin, he actually graduated high school early. He's 10 times smarter than I am, but he was a JUCO at the time. And it was kind of like a perfect storm where my little neighborhood, everyone had kind of grown up and moved out and we were like the last family there. So we tried to put the house in the market and my family said, well, if you want to go there, we're all going to go. Yeah. And that's when I was like, oh, this is, yeah, this is big. This like, is big, yeah. I need to now take, I, and that's kind of where I was like, I need to take this weight and understand like people are investing in me. Mm-hmm. And like, what, and I, and most of my early upbringing was just trying to fathom that, that like there's people counting on me to yeah, get certain things right. done now. And not that they ever outright put that type of pressure, but that was just like the internal conversation. Right. And that's where I was like, okay, I need to get really good really fast. <laughs> it's kind of where my yeah. mindset went. I don't know if I've ever uh, even heard something like that before. Like, you you know kids that uh, they move around because their parents get new jobs. Mm-hmm. Their, their parents are, you know, they're chasing their, you know, their kind of their way to provide for the family they currently have. Right. But like hearing... Uh, that you know your parents were willing to like invest in you kind of like inversely like almost like yeah. invest in your education by moving and like uprooting a new house new jobs right and, yeah like that's uh that's crazy but it's also super insightful you know like like the whole goal you know kind of as a human is to help your offspring do better than like you had you yeah, know like you exactly. always hear that you know if you've 
if you've grown up, you know, in like a reasonable family situation, which yeah. I believe we're all pretty blessed in that aspect. But Definitely. you hear that, you know, we want you to do better than we were able to do. And that's like a really uh, outside the box way of achieving that. And that like, that's like probably pretty unique. Totally. You know? Yeah. That's yeah. important. That commitment. It's just exactly. Like awesome. being a grown up now and knowing like how much sacrifice that is. For something you genuinely have no idea if it's going to work out or not. Like, we're just going to uproot, change our jobs, <laughs> yeah. change everything. Hopefully, our little baby boy, like, figures out that he needs to, like, get it done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, that was, for me, especially because I have a very close relationship with my older brother. And we, I would say, were mature for our age. So, those were the types of conversations him and I were having. Like, right. let's make this something. Like, we're seeing these stars at the time this was like you know we had seen Shaq and Kobe and we're seeing the Lakers and all these these successful athletes and my family's big tennis fans we had just seen the Williams sisters kind of blow up right. and I felt like my family not that they thought I would be on that level but we were hearing these stories of parents like just making the unbelievable sacrifice and then like to sit in Los Angeles and like they just did that for me. Holy crap. Yeah. Like <laughs> that is such a big That's deal. Awesome. And just trying not to let that like weigh you down. Like, Oh, now I, yeah. you know, I got to go do it. And then just trying to take that energy on and saying, okay, let's, let's make them proud and yeah. make something special happen. Well, I think you probably did right by them because you came out as one of so. the best uh, <laughs> athletes in the, in uh, Southern California. Wasn't yeah. It? So the high school journey, we'll kind of fast forward, but the high school journey went, it was it was rocky academically, but ended up at a very, very high note. But yes, on the basketball court, by my senior year, um, let's just go back. I started dunking at 12 years old. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's get to the athletic side I think of I things. I got net at 12, so. <laughs> so I was <laughs> sick. I was pumped. I've never done a jump before. <laughs> <laughs> I up until I was like <laughs> yeah, I was uh, already like six one and a half at twelve, wow, so I was awesome. big kid, yeah. and uh, that was of course why good things were coming athletically, yeah. right? And um, I showed up my freshman year of high school at six three two thirty five, so I was not Jeez. I was ready for the next level That's right when I got there. <laughs> That's a monster. And then yeah, so if we fast forward through the journey. Um, Everything goes very, very well there. I have a lot of success. My senior year, um, I think statistically, I, I don't know if I still hold the record, but my field goal percentage was like close to 80%. It was like wow. pretty much every shot I took, I made. Yeah, Most yeah. of it was dunks, to be <laughs> frank. <laughs> but we had a lot of fun. Um, we had a lot of success. We won my senior year. We won 26 games straight, which yeah. was set in, was I think tied for the record for like my high school's best ever team. And basketball was very big at Harvard Westlake, yeah. so that did carry a lot of weight. And uh, yeah, I dunked on a lot. <laughs> 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 yeah, I also the cool thing with that journey is um, Southern California basketball has a lot of faces in the NBA right. mm -hmm. now. So that's yeah. been like the other cool side of the journey. Like I the, dunked on that guy. I yeah. Like that guy. <laughs> I, I dunked on him. I played <laughs> with that guy. Like, Oh, I beat him too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Awesome. He's playing right now on national TV. Wow. How about that? <laughs> that's yeah. crazy. Like, uh, so you said the, the academics were challenging at the school. So how did you, you know, you know, basketballs, you've got like basketball is kind of your ticket. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you're very talented. And uh, you've got something with this basketball thing. So how did you balance like uh, improving your basketball while you passing these extremely uh, tough courses? So the cool thing um, about where I went is, you know, I'll say in, in a public school system, anytime that you meet with your professors, right, that be something negative. You're right. failing. There's a problem. No, at this school, if you don't have class, they just have office hours, just like a regular university. So my freshman year, I'll never forget this because this was like, I thought everything was going to go belly up. I was taking a world in Europe class and I'd never found out. I'd never really studied for an exam before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. In middle school, I had like 120 percent just because I was there and, right. and happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> And I mean, we had a real like hour and a half exam. And so, you know, 
everyone tells you, reread your notes and that will give you the prophecy you need to succeed. So that's what I did. I spent two weeks, took my test and I got a 61. And I'm like, and this is the first exam, 61. Nailed it. And I'm like, (laughs) oh boy. (laughs) And this is a school where if you're not doing well, (laughs) you're out. So I'm like, oh my God, we just moved here. I've only been here like half a semester. I'm basically (laughs) failing. Next test comes up. I'm like, I got this. I know, I, I know my drive, my hunger, you know, whatever my story. And I get a 62. I'm like, <laughs> hey, what it was it? improvement. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was for what, it, for what it's worth. It was because at the time I didn't know that you could meet with professors. Right. So when I actually dove into like, how do you succeed academically in a college preparatory type school is you have to literally immerse yourself in what you're doing and that's what started to play into my basketball so then it was seeing my professor spending time in the library with classmates and group settings talking about the material reflecting on it blah 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 and then after that it was 80s and 90s and then i was able to pretty much sell through unscathed the rest Mm -hmm. of the time and I think I actually finished my senior year on like honor roll. I was like, holy crap, this is like the hardest yeah. school. And I mean, to put in perspective, I mean, we had a large majority go Ivy League. Yeah. Like, and that's just doing well in the material. So that kind of little breaking point, which is minute in the grand scheme of things, but that's when it showed me that, okay, what I just did here, I need to flip around and do right. that in my, my sport. And that's kind of where things started to blend. I mean, what a great lesson to learn, too. Like, that you have these people who can be a resource for you. Yeah. And even now, I'll see, like, you know, you hurt your back one day, and the next day, you're already talking to Tony, uh, yeah. the massage therapist here. And the next day, you know, you're already talking to Toby, the our, our body work guy, yeah. because you're like, I got a problem. I'm going to use these resources to fix them. Exactly. And that's like, you know, if you have a question about an exercise, I see you grabbing Joe or Dave or any of the coaches and figuring it out. It's like... That's a, I don't know if we talk about that as athletes enough is this, it, it's a skill, right. Yeah. To be able to reach out. Yeah, it is. It tr- especially as men. I mean, we're yeah. all, I, you know, I don't too, need help. Yeah, we're too <laughs> proud to yeah, have exactly. that conversation that, Hey, I'm struggling with something yeah. and I don't know the answer. And that was like, the cool thing is that's a very, again, a very small example, but it trickled down the path. Yeah. That, like, that's why I love being that's here. That's a, a lifelong skill. Exactly. Honestly, it's just do, asking. Being comfortable <laughs> yeah, doing that. I feel like this is another, like, really, uh, Eric, unique um, lesson. You know, you you took Absolutely. the challenges presented from your studies, mm-hmm. and then you applied that to sports. Like, yeah. usually kids are signed up to do athletics so they can learn, like, life lessons and how to through their sport athletics to school Mm -hmm. well it shows that if you're challenged in school and like someone presents like something tough for you like academically that you're going to learn lessons there that apply to sports right yeah you you never hear that you always hear about the life it's always the other way around from sports but you like never hear about like how a challenging academic uh, career can improve your game can improve your ability to like yeah. mature as an athlete so like, exactly it's, awesome. it's it's all the especially you know in a sport like basketball and then later into football just having that ability to critical think mm-hmm. i mean that in a sense is learned it's not necessarily like a little kid you you know you dig deep in your your these, process these 10 so- grams and legos <laughs> right now <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean that's that's where like a sport becomes almost like you're living and breathing. Yeah, it. yeah. It's more than just like, yes, you know, I'm picking up a heavy weight and I'm doing this or I'm running this pattern that's on a piece of paper and it's going to turn into something excellent. You, you can say, this is, this has something profound. This yeah. will have a big moment, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, like it's a bummer that a lot of times people are pushed through their academics and then they just don't get those moments mm-hmm. to say like, Oh, these lessons on the court do apply to school and vice versa. And they apply to say my relationships, whatever the heck is going on. Cause we're just like, Oh, well you're good at one thing. So let's just, let's just, let's stick to that. (laughs) And we'll worry about the rest. We'll focus on that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, the school's obviously a high level education. Mm -hmm. Uh, You you said that sports wasn't necessarily the, uh, the focus here, but did they have like a, like, did they teach you about nutrition and training? Like, did you pick any of that? So nutrition came in when I got to college. Okay. Yeah. So um, 
I ended up going to the University of Miami. Um, my offers, I think, I came down to I had USC really late, Miami, San Diego State, and actually Harvard was in, were interested, but it was going to be too much to go there. Yeah. Um, and when I got to University of Miami and uh, my freshman year, was kind of rocky i was more concerned about me being a kid from california and being judged for not being tough enough because typically in in, in sports i don't know if you guys have experienced this too but when i was growing up playing travel basketball when you came to the new york teams or the southern like big tournaments and you had california across your chest you had a target on target. your back because they just assume you live in Beverly Hills right, and right. life is, you know, excellent. That East but... Coast, Beast Coast mentality. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's like, OK, well, the first thing we're going to do is punch everybody in the mouth and then we'll start to play our sport. <laughs> so if and I wish I had some of my old teammates here. But so on my recruiting visit, we play pickup basketball. And my first thing was like. Well, I'm just going to let them know now. Yeah. So <laughs> 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 we're playing and. Guys are setting a pick and roll, and so whatever. You set the screen, the guy's supposed to, like, fight over the screen, whatever. I just ran right through the guy. <laughs> just like, just let him know, like, hey, by the way, when I get here, don't mess with it's me. Yeah. yeah, and, like, it, to this day, I still get made fun of. Like, what's wrong with you? Why are you so crazy? <laughs> we're just playing pickup, man. Yeah, like, we're just Chill having out. fun. Like, your parents were here. Like, why are you so crazy? <laughs> but, um... So that's where, where Diet came in. I get through my freshman year. We actually get a new coaching staff. And he and Jim Laranega, that was our set or our, our new head coach. He had came previously from George Mason. And he was very much about the all encompassing approach, mind, body, everything. So in his time in my last three years there, we brought in massage, sports psychology and nutrition started to become a bit of a conversation because now you have guys that are trying to make a living out of this right. and they're actually right on the you know the the steps of yeah. making this a real thing. So that was that was where the conversation really really started to go about like okay, we're what we're doing playing ACC basketball against these top teams we have to be at our best all the time. So how are we going to do that? And that's where Luckily, my strength coach that was there at the time, his name was Jim Crumpos. He now works at University of Arizona, was very particular in how he managed us. And then our athletic trainer, Wes Brown, who actually now works for the Miami Heat, they had like the perfect camaraderie to get the message across that if we don't sleep well, which is probably the biggest challenge in college. Yeah and eat well, we won't win anything. Yeah. yeah. And so it ended up, I actually picked up the paleo diet. I was okay. following like tail end of my junior year into my senior year was like the first time I really started to figure out like, oh, I shouldn't just eat everything yeah. in sight. <laughs> Top ramen is a no-go. <laughs> yeah. So also oh, these salty foods are not good for me. I thought, oh, oh, oh well, that sucks. Well, like I like uh, I kind of like the paleo diet because it's um it's kind of like a uh, like a natural like whole food diet you know exactly yeah, like, like you're eating uh, vegetables you're eating meat um I think the and I might be misremembering but do they or do they kind of uh, demonize fruit a little bit though a little bit it's because they're like you're uh, trying like to no do sugar. like yeah you're trying to do addition. like low sugar fruits yeah. right like I would only do like you know, a banana would be like damn near feel like dessert. It's like, like candy. It, yeah. yeah. Like blueberries, things that had strong nutritional value. But yeah, you, like oranges, apples. No, yeah. those or at least the, how I was following it or how I perceived it. Those types of fruits were totally out of the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it crazy how good like a uh, like a sweet potato can taste oh. when you don't eat sugar, dude? Dude. Like if you cut <laughs> like, <laughs> like, 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 like does. Yeah. All those like really like feel good foods. If you cut them out, dude, and you finally sink your teeth into a sweet potato, it's, <laughs> it's like, like candy, man. Yeah, it's like 
It's crap. weird. Like we're not <laughs> meant to eat that shit. And then when we start doing it, like you keep coming back to it. And it's hard to break that oh, yeah. because if you're eating ice cream, sweet potatoes don't taste. It's like good. cardboard. It's yeah, shitty. exactly. Like, <laughs> it, the water doesn't taste good if you're drinking uh, Coke all the time. <laughs> yeah, like, and I'm I'm bad about I'm, I'm bad on the diet Coke because oh, man. one of my favorite things to do I usually do on Sundays I'll cook like massive amounts of meat and i salt it pretty good <laughs> yeah. but that salty meat is so oh, delicious dude. with a cold like cherry it's coke different. zero <laughs> it's, so much oh, better. it's so good just set you and, back oh and i'm bad about it man i, I can cry i'll sit down I'll cry, you know i'll eat like a i'll eat half a, or more of a tri-tip but i'm also drinking like four cherry cokes <laughs> <laughs> well i mean even like what we the other day we had some uh, apple juice like we went oh, to Chipotle just, and grabbed an apple juice. i haven't had apple juice in like 10 years and i took a sip and like my pupils dilated <laughs> i started like salivated i was like my heart rate spiked i was like damn this is from fruit but it's like a lot of sugar man it's like yeah. straight soda essentially well you take the fruit and then you leave all the fiber and all the vitamins well, I guess some of the vitamins come out but you leave all the guess, fiber yeah. somewhere else and you take all this sugary water yeah. that's so delicious that oh, it makes so fruit good, worth though. eating and jar it up yeah and then you have like nitrous <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> straight jet fuel oh my god <laughs> so if you're a little little fat kid on the couch oh, thinking your apple juice Delicious, is good yeah. for you like ah you better exercise you're gonna drink that apple juice <laughs> yeah leave that gatorade alone to do uh, some push-ups yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those sugary drinks will get you did but, you have any uh any of the staff were they a big proponent of paleo or is that something you picked up no, kind of researched on your own yeah so that was something i kind of researched on my own my brother um he was at a small school in michigan this all makes sense in a moment he had just lost a hundred pounds which is still mind boggling yeah. to me. So he showed up at college playing D tackle. When I had last seen him, he was like three, I think 12. <laughs> and then the next time I saw him, he was 208. What? And it was just, it was just a year. Uh, and I got worried that something like personal had happened. He had gone through like a tough time and he just kind of kept it quiet. He's my brother's a very private person. And then he's like, no, I just, didn't like being big. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. I understood like I wasn't going to go play in the league and I just kind of was over being big. So I just put myself on and he was just eating cafeteria food. But he was like, I just ate the handful of things that I knew were like generally good for me mm -hmm. and then just worked out really hard all the time. Yeah. And so he graduated and then we started living together. And that's when it was like, OK, I'm going into my senior year we had kind of got our little thing going and it's like, okay, let's maximize for both of us. Cause he was going into his master's program, just wanted to be in good physical shape. And he's one of my biggest supporters. So I said, Hey man, let's just do it together. So yeah. everything in the house is only for our health, basically for the betterment of our bodies. And let's just see what happens. Like if we don't like it, obviously we'll stop, but right. let's just see what happens. Cause we had been doing like, the massive croissant trays at yeah. Costco Ooh. and like they make it so the easy stuff. like you gotta buy two exactly. you gotta get two things of bagels and muffins you can't just get one so that's that's where we were my junior year and uh we're like let's it was going into summer basically going into the start of the senior year and we just said hey let's he was so small and I'm like okay I, I'd always been about 230 let's uh, not only about 230 when I was playing basketball and I said let me see if I can get sub 220 yeah and like lean mean sub 220 mm -hmm. and we're just gonna spend the whole summer doing that and then we'll just you know continue if we like it and that was where the paleo That's diet right. and like i really started to ask like how do i make this down to a science not quite to macro counting i didn't know what that was at the time but just like removing essentially all the things i really liked down <laughs> to just like the things you need yeah yeah, yeah. and that was kind of where that journey That's, started it, your body uh it will tell you when you need to eat and when yes. you don't you know you don't have to have this like you know this super like crazy sheet of like exactly when yeah you know, to eat. 9 30 right yeah like you know what's good for you like if you ask somebody like you walk through the grocery store mm -hmm. they know that the vegetable section is all good for you <laughs> yeah. the meat section, once you start going down those aisles you. Yeah, yeah you get in the middle <laughs> you get in the freezer section that's no good like, yeah. you gotta Nothing eject but uh, like I feel like, like in general, most people know that, but it's just something you ignore when you get there, you know? Well, and then this is the conversation him and I started to have, and I feel like you guys will find value in this too, is like, until you start to feel healthy, 
then you don't know what you're missing. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you're fully functioning adult, all your vitals are clean and you just eat whatever you want. Why do I need to change? Someone's telling me to change just because it looks cool on TV. I don't, yeah. I'm not worried about TV. I'm not on TV. Right I need muscles for. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I'm just, I, I work at a desk. Who cares? Yeah. And then say just for whatever reason, you have an epiphany. Hey, let me just try this. And then you start to feel better. And then you go back and have something you used to have. And it's like, it's like getting drunk. I'm like hung over. <laughs> like a bad that day. apple juice fucked me up, man. <laughs> Seriously. You're just like, what? why did I used to do this to myself? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you've broken that habit. Yeah. And that was kind of like what what I learned from it was like, yeah, I was I had played college basketball. I had succeeded at the highest level of high school and everything was fine. But it was just like to get to that 1% category that's been the dream. And when I when I listen to those guys talk, and another cool thing is a lot of those guys in South, when they would come to Miami in their off season, would come train and or come play pickup in our gym. So mm -hmm. I got a chance to see, when I say everyone current, I mean everyone yeah. current. Anyone who took a vacation in Miami, decided they want some cardio yeah. that was in the NBA, came yeah. to our gym. And a lot of times, I'd either have a chance to have a conversation with them or I would just sit and kind of take notes on what the trainers and them were talking about. Yeah. And that's when I'm like, oh, so this diet thing is like, it's it's real. Yeah. It actually like needs to be a part of my life. That's one thing as a weightlifter, or at least if you're trying to go up a weight class, the easiest thing to justify is like, I'm going to have cereal because I need carbs. Yeah. And it's like, I can get oh, a little yeah. dirty with it. Um, but there's something to be said about like the inflammation that comes from those kinds of foods. And it's not until you experience what it's like not having that. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, oh, now my knees hurt again because I started eating Pop-Tarts during training instead of a banana. So you should probably switch it up. You get midway through training, you're like, oh, I got indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> That's some reflux during Arfing these in your mouth. squats. <laughs> you lay down and you're like, oh, what chicken wings was a bad idea. <laughs> Uh, those that yeah that's exactly basically the, but like a, like the lesson you learned in high school you uh, had to be a student and then in college you know you kind of nonchalantly you mentioned you're taking notes meeting these guys watching them learning oh from them. yeah dude yeah. like that like that's not something that everybody does no. i guarantee your teammates weren't all doing that unfortunately no yeah no. i uh i just asked the trainer one day because it was a guy that was coming in he seemed to be habitually working with the guys and if the college guys were there, you know, sometimes he'd let us hop in. But there was like set pro times. And we were actually taking summer school. And I had a couple of courses. And other than that, like you work out a little bit, got downtime. So I was like, okay, we normally play pickup at, say, five o'clock. But at three, the NBA guys go till five and then they play with us. So I'm like, I'm just going to go over there at like 3 30 when I know they're kind of done with their warm up. And I'm just going to watch and I'm going to take my notepad. Like you said, and, and this is what I learned in school and just jot down anything that doesn't seem normal to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Doesn't need to be the, the drills are the drills. That was the thing I realized as I'd watch. I'm like, yeah, I, I do that drill. They just make 10 out of 10 and <laughs> I make six out of 10. <laughs> but I'm like, there's I know there's going to be something here that I'm going to learn and that I can hopefully apply to myself. And the biggest thing I got, so I, I watched the workout. It was uh, Kevin Durant and Joe Johnson. It's crazy. Two wow. top athletes at the yeah. time. Joe, I think, was the highest paid player in the NBA. Kevin Durant, this was like peak OKC time. And actually, Serge Ibaka's on the other court. So I'm like, okay, I'm watching some premium talent. Doesn't get any better yeah. than this, right? And Joe and Kevin are going shot for shot in this drill. And it was like they had to make the, and the drill was super difficult that they were doing. And they're like laughing and joking. And it doesn't even seem like they're playing basketball. Like that's how much of a flow there is. And the yeah. thing I picked up on it was their unwavering confidence in their ability. So like if I shot, whatever, I missed two shots. I'm like, fuck. I keep missing. I can't yeah. miss it. And all of a sudden, I can't make a shot. It's the same shot I've shot for thousands, millions of times. And I'm watching these guys, and they're running around bags and pushing and this and that. Boom, hit the shot, hit the shot, hit the shot, hit the shot. And then I look up. It's been 15 minutes, and no one has missed a shot. Yeah. And, I mean, they got sweat dripping to the ground. The guys are bent over the whole nine yards. But then I'm listening to the dialogue, and it's just like there's nothing that 
will happen on this court that I don't have control of is kind of how they were talking. Like, if I want to hit a shot from here, I'm going to hit the shot from here because I sh- I'm a shooter. I shoot. That's what I do. And it was just like, I, I'm watching. I'm like, how do, how do you get that confident? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I've always felt confident in my ability. That's why I'm at the University of Miami playing ACC basketball. But I'm like, no one I play with is that confident. Mm. And like, how did they get there? And then that's when I started to dig into the mindfulness and that was a lot what kobe bryant would talk about is the meditation the mindfulness being in the zone and how to channel that and how to get there pretty much at any point in time and that and that was like uh like end of my going into my sophomore year of college that was when i was trying to just find out like what does this mean because then i would just see like Because then we had, like, say, Kyrie Irving came in. And then we actually, it was really cool. LeBron James, Chris Paul, Udonis Haslam, like, half the Miami Heat came. And Chris Bosh came during the lockout. And all these guys are playing. And it was, like, the one thing I noticed every single time. It was, like, like it was loud in the room was this confidence, this unwavering, like, I am so much better than everyone here. (laughs) And it's not an arrogance. That's the, and that I want to make sure to highlight right. that it's not an arrogance. It's a, it's just an internal confidence that what I bring to this moment is unmatched by right. all. And that's that was kind of like, OK, how do I get that in my language? And then that's kind of that was like the big lesson, I would say, that I got out of college was especially for pro sports was like, OK, I need to channel that because no matter where I go and what I do, that applies in the job world mm-hmm. that applies in, in your sport that applies in just your training is just believing truly believing in yourself with like zero self-doubt that i can get my job done no matter what the circumstances are at all times yeah. and that was like so interesting to me and and i and then of course when i got to the nfl i saw the same thing in a lot of those guys yeah. so it's been that was like again it went back to my high school it was like I was trying to dig deeper than the sport because I'm saying they're shooting a basketball in a room. It's the same thing I've done for 17 years or 16 years at this point. But they're like speaking a different language, even though it's the same one I know. And like, so how do you get there? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, it's just a hell of an experience. Would you say it was more like the mindfulness came first and then the skill met it? Or was there just like relentless practice to the point where that mindfulness was so natural? Cause you're like, I've done this so many times that. So the way, I'm not gonna miss. the way I perceived it was what you just said. So when I were watching these guys and the drills that they were doing is very specific to their skill set. So it was something that they had clearly worked on for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Kevin Durant saw, shot very specific shots. Joe Johnson shot very specific shots. And then I went and watched during that season and the exact drill, I mean, to the T, were the shots they mm-hmm. were making. There was no withering. They had diagnosed however they, you know, did their stuff and said, okay, I'm good at these 10 things, so I'm going to master these 10 things. Right. And then that's where the mindfulness came in. We're like, so these 10 weapons I got, I can do it at any time <laughs> with thousands of people watching, you know, two seconds on the clock. I know this is my shot. And at the time, I didn't have my shot or mm-hmm. my quote unquote go to that was just like my my trump card. I, I just pull it out any time and I know I'm going to succeed. And that's what they as I dug in deeper, that's what they were training is to get to a certain level of fatigue where your mind is kind of gone. But you could still say stay quiet enough that you could hit that play, yeah. make that shot. And they're, you know, like I said, they're hitting them with bags and loud noise, music pumping, everything to just be, be like a sensory distraction. And then like I said, they would go the whole dang workout. Yeah. And it's like two shots. This is like, this overlaps so many things that we've like talked about from like the, the last time when we were talking to TJ, like we mm-hmm. asked him about, you know, how he kept like leveling up his college career. And he yeah. said like his best piece of advice would be to bet on yourself, you know, yeah. self-confidence. And then, uh, we were doing some talks on like the uh, the MJ documentary, and one of the things we noticed was that Rodman was uh, like he realized that once he got to the league that he could get rebounds and he could play defense, yeah. and then he just like just became a student of defense yeah. and getting boards. Like he yeah. knew like where these shots would fall when they miss. Like he knew oh, yeah. where to be yeah, based on how it was shot. He was a it master go now? <laughs> like yeah. of rebounds and defense, which is like I think is very like an honorable, you know, uh, like 
like path to like to work on these things that aren't glorified uh, in the in the NBA. And um, he would just grind at it and go after those things. Um, and, uh, you know, Rodman's such a unique guy and he seems like <laughs> kind of selfish, you know, like he would, he took the hiatus yeah. to, uh, uh totally went right. to Vegas. Yeah. Like the, mm-hmm. Jordan <laughs> has to go like get him out of a hotel room. He's, <laughs> yeah. Was he with Carmen Electra? Or, uh, uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think at the time it? he was in Vegas yeah. with her and yeah, then he did point. WWE and they were out there. Yeah. Yeah. She was in the hotel room, but, uh, <laughs> like, but then on the court, he's completely selfless. Mm-hmm. Like, like, like he knows this game. Like, he knows very what he's good noble, at. Uh, you know, endeavor, like yeah. going and doing the dirty work. So his team can win, which is like, like those are very like conflicting, like things. 100%. Like what an interesting guy. And then uh, the other one that came to mind, you talked about like uh, like developing the confidence. They said uh, uh, Jordan's coach after he hit that that game winner his mm-hmm. freshman year in the oh, championship. Yeah, like that was when he became uh, MJ. MJ. Yeah. 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 Um, instead of Michael or what, <laughs> whatever the exact quote yeah. was, but uh, like you know, it's almost it takes like a. Uh, it takes like confidence doesn't just happen. You can't be like, mm. I'm gonna be more confident. Yeah, you can't just I, like, or yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Will have it. confidence. You can be more confident. That's arrogance. Though, you, exactly. right? yeah. That's where it comes yeah. from. But you can't just suddenly be like, Yeah, I'm the man now. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can, not, but it's just not gonna work. <laughs> no one's I've gonna seen it. I've done it, it, man. <laughs> you have to like go you have to go earn it. You have to put the work in in the weight room, put the work in on the court and like develop the skill of being confident yeah you get stronger you get in good shape you work on your diet now you're lean six Mm -hmm. packed up 220 you feel light on the court you feel better and you play better yeah if you're stronger than other athletes you can play more aggressive you're ripping Mm -hmm. balls ripping down boards whatever like people can't push you around yeah there's more confidence you work on your shot your game and now you know you're a better shooter so when you get those shots you're not scared to take them because no. you put the reps in. Yeah. So uh, confidence isn't just magic. Like you can't just like magically be confident. You have to like find a way to like get out and like go get yours, you know, and earn exactly. it. Exactly. And, you know, these guys like MJ didn't just make that shot, you know, how much work, you know, and we how all. How many you know, times has he made that exact this shot document. already? We know yeah. this guy like was just like crazy about it. Like it, he was driven to be the best ever you know before he even got to unc Mm -hmm. it's like i'm gonna be the best player that ever played there yeah by the end of his freshman year he's sinking a a game (laughs) winner on the biggest stage yeah he's winning national champion right i mean so like it's not it's not magic you're not you know magically confident and it's not something that you just have like no you you go and you get it and like that's something we see like in you here like you're you know like all the pro guys they don't come in every day you know they don't do the the hard work guy. They don't do the conditioning uh, twice a week, you know. And these are like things. As soon as you got here, you're here the most. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, which is something you know we we uh, noticed that in Kiko. Kiko's been coming back a yeah. long time. He spends a lot of time here in the off season. Yeah. Um, and he's very consistent. And then you, you know, being the new guy this year, um, also like super consistent, coming there, putting in work, like getting your body better, like trying to, you know, like develop yourself so yeah. it's just like it's cool to like see you know everything you're talking about it you're like you live it too. Yeah. yeah try my best <laughs> you know, I mean, that, was, that was one of the reasons we were so excited to get you on just because <laughs> like i mean ever since i've been coming here once you know i was told like oh when the football guys come it's really fun oh, and you were okay. the first one oh. and you're and you're the one i see the most often you're the most <laughs> consistent and just like you know even studying some of the things you do and you know how you're reaching out for help and stuff like yeah. that i'm just like man this is some i would say you're a, a professional above what the actual de- definition of that word is because okay, all these all these guys are technically pros right yeah, yeah. but like you live this life and it's it, it goes so much deeper than that and it's just like it's gotta it's awesome. be what i've learned is is to have real success or i mean we're all in this to win, right? That's that's the whole point. Yeah. It's not for the journey to right. get a participation trophy, right? Yeah. And that's what I've been trying to figure out. How, How do you win and win all the time? Yeah. And not win in a sense where you feel like you lucked out and just like everything, the stars align, but yeah. no, like definitively made it clear that this person is on this level and knows how to achieve and knows how to stomach these tough times and whatever it may be that's where i've gotten so hungry and so process oriented some of it 
comes and you know you know you lose a, a major moment and you're like okay well i never want to feel this feeling again mm -hmm. and i know when i reflect on my journey this piece was missing mm -hmm. so now this piece is me this is what it's going to be whatever it was that i needed to work on and the process i'll say that you guys see now stems from my senior year of college so that summer that i was talking about with my brother the other big change i made was before i would go and just participate in the workouts with the team a little shooting after say half hour that's it and it wasn't yielding a lot of opportunity for me like yes i had this great process and was meditating and yes i'm in the zone but like i said i didn't have a shot mm -hmm. i didn't have the things that i know you need to succeed at the highest level so what also came with the diet was i and this was kind of like this felt like stars aligning i joined like a summer league that our coaches were just like hey just so we can get some more play and I met one of the most renowned coaches, high school coaches, coincidentally, in Miami high school basketball. His name is Chachi Rodriguez. And Chachi ended up being my shooting coach. So then I, I would wake up in the morning, go to him. So I'd do like an hour to two hours with him, then go lift with the team, then work out with the team. Then I would do my own workout then play pickup and then shoot after so yeah. then i went from working out and i got very like addictive with it yeah oh, for it was sure. just you're a college kid there's nothing else to do right. so let's push it to the limit so i went from working out let's just say a lift plus a shooting workout to a lift like yoga swimming something kind of off center and like three shooting workouts in a day. So it ended up being like, I was basically just working out all day. Yeah. And in that time period, so I, I adopted this, okay, so whatever, low impact shooting, training, higher impact, and then compete, and then work on the things I didn't do well in competition. Right. And that's what I started to do all summer long, and then I carried it into the season. And that's when I realized as the season went on and all that, like, oh, OK, these are my shots. These are my counters. And these is how I can be successful. And then my senior year ended up being my best year because I took the whole encompassing yeah. deal. And then I started to see actual results. And we started to I mean, my junior year, we won big as a team, but I was not a major contributor. Yeah. We had won the regular season ACC. We were in the ACC tournament and we went to the Sweet 16. But the thing that upset me personally was I watched a lot of that. I didn't experience a lot. I love my teammates. I have the most, you know, utmost passion for them. And I love the journey because I love team sports. But yeah, when I reflect on the journey, I'm like, <laughs> I was cheering with the rest of them, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And I look back on it and I said, that was, that was my fault. That wasn't like because... I just suck and everyone was better. It was like, no, they were putting in the time and I was just enjoying being a part of the ride. And that's not what I stand. That's never anything I'd ever yeah. done. And I was so upset, even which is bittersweet, because, again, it was an awesome opportunity. But I was so upset with myself. I'm like, I, I want to contribute to a moment yeah. like this. And I just missed the ball. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally. Man, like, yeah. <laughs> like how, how often does it happen that like you're just it's so simple. Yeah. Right. Like even in weightlifting, you know, uh, Dave or, or you coined the term that work works. Like what's the definition of insanity? Right. You're just doing the same thing and expecting something different. How yeah. often do we see weightlifters who, who don't change anything, who just expect themselves to get better versus doing more work, doing more <laughs> yeah. things? You went from, you know, what, two to three workouts to six yeah, in a day. Seriously. And that's what it took to kind of take that next level. Like, yeah. That's the, all sports. The word that. bittersweet. I was literally was going to ask him, was it like, like when you, like you had four, four years or did you play? Four, four? years. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you had four years that you could have been doing the six. <laughs> yeah. You learned exactly. it. Like, fourth how, year. like you kicking yourself in the foot. Like after you figure out this 100%. recipe, like hundred like, percent. Yeah. yeah. When, then that's where, uh, halfway through, I think it was like my senior year. I'm like, I'm realizing I just missed my moment and I'm trying to not let that impact the beauty of graduating from college right. and a senior season. But 
we get about halfway and we're kind of having tough times and actually had a very, and that was kind of the first time I had an experience where I had to stand up for myself without family around. Cause you know, they're always kind of there to make sure you're all right, right and do the right thing. Well, again, we have this great season. We get into senior year. I'm like, and our coach was very big on senior leadership. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be a senior leader. This is, I love leadership. The reason I like leadership, honestly, selfishly, is because then I can't let myself go. Because if I'm the leader of the pack, that's why I even do that here. I don't know if the guys notice, but I like to lead the workouts because if I mess up, we all mess up. Yeah. And I'd rather take that burden on than watch someone else do it, even if it's right or wrong, and just have to lean on them. So I just prefer to be, I was that way when I got to high school. I just prefer leadership roles. It demands accountability. Exactly. Like I, can't let myself go so getting into my senior year of college i'm like look whether they want to or not <laughs> i'm the head man yeah. which just <laughs> means i get to set the tempo right not necessarily that i'm in power and uh, you know some other things that could end up being like a power trip but just like cool now i get to set the example yeah. for these young guys coming in we had good talent coming in after such a crazy season and uh, we get to the first half of the year and I'm like, again, barely playing. And I had been doing this process and I'm like, OK, there's a piece that's missing. I hadn't like I was doing all of this quietly. I was training like if we lost a game and came home, I'd wait for everyone to leave. Like I'm saying, we get on two in the morning. My brother's a night owl. So he's like, hey, man, I ain't going to bed. Let's yeah. Let's just go to the practice gym. Practice gym's always open if we had our little ID card. So I'd wait for everyone to leave, pretend like I'm going, and I'd go back to the court, and I would just shoot by myself. Like, guys will go party at midnight. I'm shooting at midnight. I thought it was so much fun. It's quiet. You play your own music, whatever. But I wasn't doing it for social media or anything. I was doing that because I really wanted to keep playing basketball. Right. So what happened was I had been putting in all this time, and unfortunately – the dialogue wasn't making it to the decision makers that like I really badly want to succeed. So, and this was the moment of a, a big challenge for me was we go to Los Angeles. It was, I've been begging the coaches. Can we play in front of my family? Not everyone can make it to Florida. We go to LA and we're there for four days. I play like 20 minutes, Yeah, four games. I was like nothing. And I had family, all these people would see me in high school, whatever. I thought it was going to be like this big kumbaya and again, I'm watching the games and I was devastated, like humiliated. We barely even want to talk to my family. I'm like, I mean, like I've been in four years and you guys aren't even seeing really the fruit of the labor or right. anything. Like it, to me, it felt like kind of like my high school thing, like you guys in, invested in in this journey and you're just not seeing any results. So this was uh, going into Christmas break. I met with my coach. All right, I've reached out to him multiple times, and at first it was kind of taken lightly. And then I was like, look, I really like need to talk to you. And this was kind of where I felt like I stepped into being more of an adult is I walked in his office and I just simply asked him, I said, hey, look, I know. Um, I know we're having a tough season and um, I got a couple people that are playing in front of me, and I just want to ask you an honest question. Um, why? Why are they playing and I'm not? Mm -hmm. And what is it that I can do that can help this team get over the hump? And my coach looked me dead in my face and said, eh, I don't know. And that was it. You're kidding, man. Damn. So in the heat of the moment, I'm like, trying to stay content. Because obviously I, yeah. the whole point I'm here in this meeting is because I want to win. It has nothing yeah. to do with me, but I want to win. And winning means we all win. And when we win, good things come, right? Mm -hmm. So I took it in, you know, my mindfulness, I took a deep breath, like, don't curse. Don't be <laughs> I would have been so mad right? at I was that like, answer. Yeah. Just, okay. And I had like a long list of things and I just put my list down and I said, okay, I'm going to just try and put this in, in plain English. I said, so if I'm your boss. And you've been habitually showing up late to work. And then I just ask you, hey, um, why are you why are you late all the time? And you just looked me in my face and said, I don't know. I said, I, I would just fire you. Yeah. Just move on because there's no reason for you to be here. So 
you're going to need to give me a better answer than, than I don't know. And like, I don't talk like that right. to my like yeah. authoritative yeah. figures. So it was very like, Oh, <laughs> you know, it was one of those moments. You're so you're so polite and well-spoken and it's obvious you come off like that. Like you're the most genuine, like yeah. person, like it's, <laughs> Like, but you get put in those situations and, and you're it's like, like, don't explode. Like, Just don't. Because I know you have that respect for the like men that are supposed yeah. to be like your authoritative figures, like yeah. the people that are supposed to lead you and guide you. And when like someone that's in that role just, just shits on you, like that, it was dude, hard. like, man, like, yeah, it was those of you for like keeping it, like, keeping it cool, man. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. It still <laughs> gets my blood boiling a little bit now, honestly, yeah. but, uh, it ended up being a very positive conversation because it basically, basically ended as, Hey, look, you like just to what you said, you, there's people here trusting you to evaluate the guys here and give them a fair opportunity based off merit. That's what a team sport is. I'm not asking for special treatment. I'm not asking for anything different than anyone else getting just evaluate me and let me know what I can do to, you know, to, to, affect this team in a positive way that's all i'm asking and that's where the conversation left the next day it was taken to heart he was riding me to hold <laughs> but but that was what i asked what for want. exactly because then after that i started every single game and i played the uh, college games 40 minutes i was playing 38 minutes a game and we went from struggling to we were supposed to be bottom of the barrel we finished 500 and then i had like in our last couple of games I like crucial plays for us to win. And I was like, finally, but then it's over. Right. Yeah. And that's where it was so, again, so bittersweet. Cause I'm like, if I would have just stood up for myself at the start, if I would have just taken the time to do this training, I would be where I'd want to be, or at least have a much better chance. And, and now it's over. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where the conversation of football yeah. came up because I was so like, gosh, I, I tried Almost everything. Deflated. Yeah, like yeah. I did everything I could. I tried to live, you know, by the right whatevers and blah, blah, blah. And here I am Stop and I don't have. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. So I gave up the good the stuff. <laughs> yeah. And it was one of those like, but I know I still want to play sports. Yeah. I just learned probably the most valuable lesson I could learn as a now 21 going on 22 year old pick it up and figure it out. So coincidentally, after the ACC tournament, we lose a uh, second round and uh, talk with my coaches. Hey, I want to play overseas. Cause in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go overseas with this new mentality, stick up for myself. I got my training, right. I'm going to make this a reality. And then, um, uh, on the flight home, so that we basically we met, met all the seniors, it was five of us, and we all met, kind of talked, or four of us, excuse me, and we talked about what our life after college was gonna be. They met as a staff, and then on the flight back, tell us, these are our thoughts, these are how we think we can help you. Um, so we have our conversation, I'm talking to my head coach, and then he said, oh yeah, and there's this, um, this other weird thing I just thought I'd share with you now that like basketball's done. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. What, you know, what's going on? He said, so a scout from the Denver Broncos, and this was going, they had just lost to the Seahawks in the Super Bowl and they, you know, they got beat down pretty bad. Um, but still Super Bowl Peyton Manning's Broncos. Yeah. A scout's been uh, contacting us since, and this is say March. It's been contacting us about January, um, that they want to, work you out and see if you have what they call football traits. And I looked them dead in the face and just burst out laughing because <laughs> <laughs> my football experience at the time was I tailgated, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, you're you're natural. Natural. I, yeah, I know, yeah. I know of a game. football <laughs> stadium in Miami. I, I know of one. I don't know if I ever actually saw anything straight, but I knew of a, of a football stadium <laughs> and uh, I'd heard, yeah, I'd heard of the sport and <laughs> I'd heard that my university had a long history of it. And if I went to a game, I was like thrilled that I knew who had the ball. That was about like <laughs> the gist of, <laughs> yeah, the only, so in high school, they tried to get me to play. My senior year of high school I was actually playing pickup basketball with some older NBA players and Keyshawn Johnson, who
who at the time was big sports reporter, obviously very favored career. And he was the first person that was, we were just playing pickup and he pulled me aside and was like, you know, you shouldn't be out here. And I'm like, what are you trying to say? I'm like, not good enough to play. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 no. Like I'm being serious. Like football is your game. And I'm like, cool. Like, it's nice to meet you, yeah. but no. And that was like the first time I, like I just had like a little bit of a seed from like someone very respectable that like maybe you should consider this sport. And then now I'm sitting here senior year after this rocky ass journey and my coach is telling me like, oh, yeah, football's looking at you. I'm like, of course, football. Like, what the <laughs> hell? Of course it comes it's now. It's calling you again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, I came home and told my brother. My brother's a massive football, like, just sports nice. fan. And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, now it's happening. <laughs> and um, so I reached out to the guy and I'm like, we had a little conversation. He's the nicest dude ever. His name is Nick Shirelli. He's the nicest dude ever. And he's like, yeah, man, I can. Uh, he was he was in somewhere in northern floor. He's like, yeah, I can come down and work out. And, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. And I was like, uh, give me a week. Because at the, the time I talked with him, it was University of Miami's pro day. And I felt that was so disrespectful if I hopped into their pro day. These guys had done everything. This was their dream. And for me to still one rep from these guys to me felt like a disservice and a disrespect to not only them, but the university. So I said, I do not want to do that. Let's just pick like a random ass day. So I just said, let's just go next week. We'll just pick a day, talk to like my, well, and talk to the Miami folks and let's just figure that out. He's the nicest dude ever. Uh, <laughs> like, like that, like this is what kind of dude Eric is. Like, <laughs> so like a huge opportunity like that. And you're still considering other people the whole the, thing. Thing. The, the bigger picture i would have right? never thought about that even as he said that i'm like what i like, <laughs> yeah. never like just hearing this world and never even like considered like yeah. turn down an opportunity i wouldn't even considered like these guys like feelings that yeah. sound <laughs> terrible but who would like you're getting yeah, calls just, from the nfl yeah, to get worked like, out and you're like hey God, these man. guys first like dude like it's yeah i mean what a dude. I had seen what these guys had gone through. Yeah. I had seen their highs and lows, and I understood for, and not that I put myself in higher regard than others, but I just understood that, like, because I understood what I was going through. And if I had a basketball trial with the NBA team and some football dude hopped in, I'd have been like, get yeah. him out of here. <laughs> what is he doing here? And basketball traits? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, what the hell no. is basketball traits? Get out of here, bro. <laughs> so that was just where my head was. And I actually, so I'll say this, prior to the workout in the, the one-week span, I tried to actually play for the University of Miami. I reached out to the coaches, and it seemed like they had already made their decision. They were going in a different direction, so they didn't really entertain me at all. So I'm like, oh. Guess I'm just gonna shoot for the stars and yeah. see, you know, see what happens. And yeah. so, not only that conversation happens, but the biggest pillar to my development happens. So, my freshman year, I meet this six seven redhead kid named Jimmy Graham. He was just coming off his rookie year with the New Orleans Saints. He had played basketball at Miami. He had played football at Miami, and he went third round to the Saints and is now as big as it gets but at the time he was figuring it out and he came by week actually my freshman year and uh i'll never forget this because i was in a, a, a boot at the time I, I had a high ankle sprain and i'm crutching across campus like 90 degrees outside he pulls up in his fancy beamer vroom, he pulls up on me and i'm at the time so paranoid about boosters because miami was under a lot of scrutiny so <laughs> You know, we, we we didn't always do everything by the book, and the, the whole world knows this. So I'm on my crutches, and this dude comes up, rolls down the window. Hey, bro, you need a ride? Looked him dead in his face. Hell no, I don't know who you are. <laughs> and he was like, you're going to regret this later. I'm like, then I'll regret it then, though. Get out of my face. And he, boom, he takes off. And then I crutch into the gym, and it's him standing there, and everyone's like, Jimmy. And everyone had told me that had been there when Jimmy was there, like you're literally like his twin. And I'm like, um, okay, like that's cool. Yeah. I don't know this guy. So then I finally meet him and, and he's the nicest human being ever. So then we fast forward 
that introduction to now we're in this week. So my athletic trainer was one of my best friends and he was very close with Jimmy. And he said, well, don't know if it's worth it, but I know Jimmy's training because it was off season. So he's like, um, I'll give you his number, reach out to him. I'll let him know that you're going to reach out to him and um, just pick his brain, see what, what he thinks about switching sports, the the journey, blah, blah, blah. So I'm all, you know, ecstatic, excited. Yeah. <laughs> and I call, I call him like, hey, man, is, is, is Eric Swope. I don't know if you remember me. He's like, yeah, of course I remember you. What do you need? And I'm like, so this is happening. Phone goes quiet. And he's like, the first thing you need to ask yourself is why you're doing this. He said, because the first thing I'm going to let you know about switching sports is basketball's fun. Football and professional football is about how bad you actually want it. So figure out why you want to do this. And I work out at 8 a.m. I'll see you tomorrow. And it just banged it on me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. So that week and I started just like kind of lightly meeting the guys. And it was Jimmy Graham, Jonathan Vilma, who was on the Saints Super Bowl team, DJ Williams, who's a big time athlete from De La Salle. I think I forgot what round he went, but very high, played very long career. Santana Moss. These are all Miami guys. Andre Johnson, Reggie Wayne. I mean, the, it was this long list of the best of the best of football that all went to this university and they all trained together. And all of a sudden I'm in the football weight room because they're separate. And I'm like sitting here with the greats. And the coolest thing about it was they could care less because Jimmy had kind of opened up this avenue, yeah. this conversation that like basketball can switch. So they're like, if you're good at play, you know, if you're good and you you show up on time, like I don't give a damn who you are. And that was the cool thing. So I, I meet these guys and then I go do my workout. So then I'm all pumped up. You know, I've had one week's prep <laughs> for my big NFL opportunity. <laughs> We're going to do great. And uh, shockingly enough, I do 14 reps to 25. I had to have the scout show me how to get in a 40 stance and on a hand clock for what fair. it's worth. I run a four, five, seven, which is flying, which is <laughs> not flying. slow by <laughs> any been, means. This man is huge. So this <laughs> yeah. is asshole. <laughs> He's hauling all the ass running a four five <laughs> and this big. Basically everything that I had done that day, if I would have done the NFL combine would have made me the number one tight end coming Elite. out. So we do all this stuff, and this was kind of where the journey took like a really cool twist was we finished like the the metrics, and then now it's time to play some football. So now we're going to throw. So then we needed to go from the track field to the football field. I didn't know Miami had its final spring practice. So the media is there. All the media that's covered me in basketball is there. So we're walking across, got the guy with the Broncos hat, and like my brother and a couple buddies with me. And the media is like, you know, of course, the Twitter fingers, they're right to it. Oh, my God, what is he doing over here? And I go out there with my buddy who's ne who was the starting quarterback at Miami, Stephen Morris, and we throw passes. And for, let's just say, 30 minutes, we throw passes. I don't drop one. So I'm like, okay, I see the numbers. I've just caught all these passes. Things seem good. What do I do now? Like, yeah. where do I go from here? And my brother's great idea, and you can go on my Twitter profile now. So I made one, my very first tweet. He says, uh, just write at the NFL, ESPN, and all that, and just tell them that you're entering your name in your draft in the draft. And let's let's just see if you can get just a second workout. Because <laughs> say let's just say Denver goes a different direction yeah. and then this this door just shuts before it even opened. Right. So I'm like, sure, why not? Let's just keep this weird scenario going i write the tweet boom, like oh my it goes crazy <laughs> and then before i know it the like say i think it was maybe six weeks prior to the draft i mean my phone never stopped ringing i talked to i think 27 teams and then i ended up working out in front of 12 in the period of like six weeks wow. and yeah it was just like all of a sudden, bam, you're a football player now. I like went, I did one like basketball workout, I think, after the Broncos one, and I was just totally out, like brain's not in it. I'm like, okay, clearly, I think my 
everything is telling me let's just try this yeah so then yeah so then we fast forward to this was how my experience started so my birthday's on friday i graduate from college on saturday saturday night i undrafted signed with the indianapolis colts sunday morning i'm in indianapolis hell of a week <laughs> that's how quick it was just like bam you're an nfl player now I thought I was going for just like a physical and like welcome packet and fly you back. Ten weeks. <laughs> I was that no, I did did not pack enough. <laughs> like I, just, I got no clothes. Bro. I got nothing. I'm in a hotel with a playbook, cleats, gloves. Here, you're you're gonna go out with Andrew Luck and the guys and start learning how to play football. Good luck. And that was literally how, and it was just like, well. Not in Miami anymore. I'm now in the Midwest, which I've never been. I had one uncle that lived in India. I'd seen him when I was in like elementary school. And now I need to figure out what all this stuff means. <laughs> but you had a lifetime of uh, lessons that prepared you for it. Yeah. You know? yeah. If, yeah. If anyone could switch sports and would be intelligent enough to like pick up a playbook and learn something brand new. Yeah. Uh, it's you. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was a rocky road <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's like like keeping you know, like this is like you're looking out for opportunity too like yeah like you know you you have these little like like glimpses of like football football they're just kind of popping mm -hmm. up you know from from that little you know high school your freshman year of college and like uh you know the denver rings you up it's like yeah like it's just it just keeps like <laughs> it's almost like destiny but you're yeah. paying attention you know yeah exactly and then you're trying it and like uh like you're your ability to like learn how to work at basketball in college set you up to be capable at, for football. And know? that's, ex and that's exactly what I've learned now in this journey. Right. How it, many basketball guys can just can rep two twenty five on the bench? Uh, not many. <laughs> close, to, close to zero. Close, yeah. Very, <laughs> I mean, to put in perspective, I know Kevin Durant's story is they do the, the 185 test and he couldn't get the bar off his chest. I mean, <laughs> it's not normal. And my senior year of high school, I benched 365. So Jeez. it's so like I already, you know, it was like when I started to reflect on the journey, I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah cool. There's a sign. I should have listened a little better. Yeah. I was like, ah, yeah, I don't, I don't really look like my teammates. They're all significantly taller than I me. I got all these muscles. Bro. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm buff. They're like lanky. That's why I was trying to lose the weight. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm like, so uh, you okay. had to work to lose like muscles off your body. So you <laughs> exactly. Look like your buddies. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, okay. Now, now I'm, and that's what happened is when I first got going, I was like, this is what i've been looking for yeah, i love it yeah just the the physical challenge the on uh, the brutal honesty that you get in football the jobs based off merit were very uh in your face and the the cool learning lesson i got is they told you you know when you're a rookie don't what how to say it be seen not heard Okay. That was like one of the first things I was told from some of the veterans there, because a lot of times, so in the NFL, when you first get there, you get drafted. So you would think, oh, I'm drafted. So that means something, which yeah. you quickly learn when you get to the NFL. That just means you have a higher chance of making the roster because they are a little bit more invested than these other 90 men. Right. That's really all the NFL draft is doing for I mean, it's. It's changing families' lives. I'm not trying to, to overshadow it. But when you get into that building with those men, men who their lives depend on this and feeding their families, it's much bigger than just college. We're having fun. I got, a, yeah. I got four years guaranteed to do whatever. I can make mistakes and blah, blah, blah. No, you are the 1% of the 1%. Time to grow up now. Mm -hmm. The blessing was... In Indianapolis, we had a large majority of guys that had been in the league 10 years, 12 years, 14 years. My close friend Adam Vinatieri has been in the league like 24 years. I mean, you had guys with a lot of miles at the professional level, and that was one of the first lessons, and I took that lesson to heart. And the cool thing that kind of paid off is I befriended all the vets my rookie year. Like, I was a man of few words, <laughs> for sure, <laughs> but... The people that I got very close with, I was again, it was it, it went back to that same thing. And when I was playing pickup is like 
So how do you stay in, and now that I'm in the sport, now I can literally ask you because we're friends before it was in college and I'm like trying to be respectful, but it's like, so tell me, like, how do you stay in this business for 14 years, for 10 years, for this and that? And I have my notepad. Yeah, Eric has a notepad. Same thing, <laughs> oh, I have my it. notepad. I would ask him questions or I just start to kind of study a guy's routine. Okay, so he gets here at this time. He eats at this time. He eats these things. He does his treatments at this. He does his extra meetings at this time. He catches extra passes after he works on whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then before I knew it, because I was trying to figure out, like, I need a football plan. I don't even know the sport. I don't know. Like, the, my first game, I didn't even know game flow, like media time. Like, in basketball, you have a media timeout every four minutes. So we say it's 10 rounds. It's 10 round, 10 four minute rounds. That's how the basketball game is played. The last round is the, the last four minutes of a basketball game. That's where you win. So I had I had it down to like this science of like I need like in, in, in high school, it was like every because we I think it was 40 minute games, too. So it was like I'd have to ask my dad, but it was basically if I got like four points and two rebounds, I'd end up with 2010. If you look at my high school average, it's 21 and eight and a half. Yeah. Like I had it down right. to a damn yeah. science. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, okay, I need, that's what makes me feel like me. So I need to figure that out at the football level, you know, at, at, at pro football level. I'm not going in where it's like, I can have a slow start. Like they're bringing you in because you're supposed to be at your peak. So like, I need to peak now, yeah. even though I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> and so that was most of my rookie year. I had no idea what was going on, but I said, okay, Reggie Wayne, and he was the guy that I got very close with. I'm just going to watch Reggie from a distance. He's the most respected person in this entire Colts organization, him and Robert Mathis, but Robert was on defense, so I was staying with the offense. So, And that's what I did. And I got very close with him, and I got very close with Andrew Luck and a handful of other guys, and that's all I did was study their process my first year. Then my second year is when I actually started to learn football. Yeah. <laughs> but most of it was just that like – blows my mind. <laughs> right? <laughs> no football for the – First year of your professional career, but my first camp practice, I had to have a teammate show me how to put shoulder pads on. Yeah, of course, like, can you zip me? I'm like, do you do you put the arm through the strap or oh, oh it goes like you strap it and then you put your arms down. I'm saying like, because you have chest straps that hold the whole contraption together, <laughs> and I literally was trying to like put the arm through <laughs> and they're like bro 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 let me help you let me help you and I'm like oh, oh so I'm like and then you strap it as tight as you can so someone can't like yank you sideways i'm like so now i can't really breathe because i put this thing on like this shield on as tight as i can i got the helmet with no vision and our first drills like one-on-one -on -one against our d linemen like hit oh each other as gosh. hard as you physically can i couldn't imagine oh man I, my so i i just got a late start not like a not like a, you did not as like you know obviously but uh I, I wasn't playing football to my sophomore year of high school. Mm -hmm. And I get in there, you know, they give me my stack of, like, pads for my pants, my shoulder pads. And uh, I'm sitting down, and I got my pants. And I have no idea how to get these pads. I go, I got a knee pad on my thigh, my oh, yeah. knee pad upside down. I got, I'm trying to work my belt and my hip. I had an upside down hip pad. Like, oh, dude, God. I was a mess. And, uh, oh. you know, I, like, in a – in athletics, you know, it's pretty good, like, camaraderie. People, like, yeah. you know, they help each other out. They take care of their own, you know, if you're on the same team, you got at least a few buddies. So, you know, I had some friends help me out <laughs> trying to figure, you know, to get my pads right. But, uh, like, at the pro level, like, I, you know, I guess the guys know, they're like, all right, this is a basketball player. We got to yeah. get this guy right. And they're just, like, throwing you in. The <laughs> and like, all right, you right got to crash in this guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're like, just, this guy well, they're like, just, just go be fast and we'll figure out the rest. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. Yeah. How many times was it like, all right, because uh, for me, it was like, all right, we're running west right. <laughs> so just, you just get the ball and go to the right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and even that sip was still mess up the left or right. That's still got the wrong side. Oh yeah. Like I like was was they run like all right, swoop your line up on the right. You just gotta run to the left and just be on the left. You know, like what like uh, and because uh, it will. Here's a here's a tough thing. So when you first get there, especially as a rookie, you don't go with the starters that know what's going on and right. can lend you a helping hand. You're out there with the guys that know as much as you do, which is nothing. 
So some of the quarterbacks aren't even used to hearing a call in the headset. They're used to, you know, you see college football, they do the signals. They got the big, you know, cardboard deals with the signs on it. And you see the whole team look, you know, they look and, oh, okay, that's the play we're running. So now you have a young guy that's blurting out the information so fast because say it was just like, I write 94 ISO. So it's just, it's a, I'm lining up on the right. That's what it tells the tight end. Right, left is the designation for start, or sorry, for the strength of the offense. So I write the four means we're going to the right. The nine just means it's a zone play. Okay. it's That's like, bare bones the four so it's kind of going this sounds like a different language right like there's gonna be a lot of people here with like that little (laughs) blood is gonna be Uh, myself included (laughs) (laughs) so (laughs) he's got all these numbers just like he's like "Mm," like, (laughs) so you form a giant eye (laughs) and this is the simple stuff this is like the bear there's we i didn't even say a call that has like movement in it this is literally like when he (laughs) says it we just line up wait for him to say go and we all go and i didn't know that there was different cadences so like Mm -hmm. just for those who don't know football at all when you hear it on tv you're hearing the quarterback make all blue 20 all these noises well there's a bunch of different ways that it's said so that the defense can't figure out what's going on Again, my football experience was tailgating. So <laughs> my first day, they're like, all right, we're on one, which on one at the time was like, blue 80, you know, say go, blue 80, blue 80, say go. Let's just say it was like that. First time said, say go, bam, just took off. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. And then the whole staff is laughing. The guys are laughing. I line back up. I'm like, that I mean, I re- you, you told me hey, that. That ain't funny. I'm trying to make money. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah seriously. I'm like, well, <laughs> you said run left. I ran left. What's so funny? And they're like, it's on one. I'm like, what, is, what does this one? mean? <laughs> what is one? Like, I went on the first thing he said. That's on one, right? And, yeah, so it's <laughs> – it was a hell of a learning an experience. process. Yeah. Learning process. Oh yeah. What a game though, right? Like you only you only get to play when you're in season. Mm-hmm. Then the whole rest of the time, you just gotta figure out how to get better at the game that you can't play right now. Right. The game that you can't play and physically you don't really wanna emulate for your own <laughs> health. Safety. Yeah. Yeah, you don't wanna put pads on <laughs> no. and hit human beings to like replicate. That's that was the biggest change is like in basketball. I could go and train situational things and it would feel just like the game time on the clock, play the music. I'm sweating. I got the same apparel I have on in a game, t-shirt, shorts, and shoes. And I could really get into it. So then when you got to basketball training camp, it was just learning what the emphasis of the season is going to be with football. Like I can't go shoot free throws. Like I can't go run routes for hours and hours and hours. There's an element of football, and you can ask any football player, that when you get to playing football, it's like you've never worked out. Like It's the hardest thing you've ever done because to recreate the exertion, the anger, the, 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 the stress of all of it, the, the quick cadences and all these things, the training only gets you so far, and then you just have to go and play the sport. And I've never been a part of something where, like, I can't recreate yeah, the stresses yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. It's such a weird, and I'm still so fascinating to me now. Like, I can push myself as hard as I want and just, it's just not the no, until I get out there and we're playing, and then I start playing for an extended period of time, then I'm like, oh, yeah, no, yeah I'm good now. Yeah. But, oh, what an experience yeah, it's been. Like only snatching from the blocks. Yeah. The entire training. The physical yeah. aspect is like, like you don't only have to know like where exactly you have to be, what exactly you have to do. And if you mess it up, you're screwing not only the 11 guys on your side of the ball, but your defensive teammates as well. So there's yeah. 22 people riding on you to do exactly what you're supposed to. But you're also at, at war with the 11 guys on the other side of the ball. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. not only does he have to do everything right and be exactly where you're supposed to be, you're also having to collide and win a physical battle with another man across the ball from you at the same time. Yeah, so mentally, how do you prepare? What's What was different preparing for a basketball game versus preparing for a football game? So let's just say 
the average basketball game, we would run offensively. We'd run anywhere between eight to 12 plays. Like 12 plays is like, dang, we really like went in our tool bag to win this one. Yeah. And say defensively, same thing. Maybe we ran four to five different schematic defenses, blah, 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 blah. An average football like game week install is, let's just say, on a minimum, about 180 plays. <laughs> now, of the 180, <laughs> let's just say about 100, uh, 120 are ones that you have now repped through training camp, through the off-season program. So technically, they are like clockwork, but they are still easy to mess up. And then you have 60 brand new things you've never heard before in your entire life especially in the red zone and your job is so and in, 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 again go back to my basketball so in basketball you play every three to four days now we're a week preparation for one shot that you again can't really emulate even in practice you really can't emulate it because you don't hit your teammates as hard as you hit the opponent and they have things that you don't know what they're going to do. And it's this big chess match. And it's just like, like in basketball, I could almost over-prepare. Like I was talking to you about this long training that I was doing, all these things. Where like with football, you still need to have this element of freshness with such an exerting sport. And you don't want to be so mentally bogged down that then you can't play fast. Right. So it's like this weird, I always kind of the conversation I always have is most of football is just handling stress. You have all of these things happening. They happen so fast. You got one take, you know, it's one try and it's got to be perfect. And then you get there and what's the first thing that happens? Nothing goes as according yeah. to plan, right? right? <laughs> That's like what always you happens. You so focused on one route that you're blind to everything else. You yeah. You just got to like feel it. So it's like know what to do, but don't. Don't be so locked in that like you can't adjust you because that's all that's happening in the game is these constant adjustments. So if you're going in, all right, the quarterback told me on the sideline we're running blah because I've had this happen before. We're running blah, we're running blah. I'm picturing the route like a basketball. I'm picturing my free throw. All right, I'm running the route. I'm gonna win the route. I'm gonna score. Blah blah. We get out there. Da, 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 da. You hear the quarter. You hear like the. <laughs> Okay, guys, new play. <laughs> and then all of that mental energy just went to nothing. And then we call something, and I'm like, oh, damn, I don't even remember like, this you know, play. That's, you know, right that's the worst feeling, dude. You're in the huddle, and you hear some shit you don't even remember. That's from 10 weeks ago. Yeah. You don't even know what's about to just happen. Just be fast. Yeah, yeah and just you're just like. I'm this dude. Like, I don't you're like, know. I have a general idea that it looks something like this. Okay, go. And they're just like, uh, get in your stance. And I'm like, oh, 70,000 people you can't even hear anybody oh god bam the ball's gone and shit what was the play like that's like that's literally like compared to basketball where like if i call two two has been two for the end of you know for the beginning of time it will always be two two. it's always ran the same exact way yeah nothing is changing we're good, like, and if something changes, just shoot the ball. Who cares? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll just live to fight another day. Like, it, it's so strategic and so specific. And and I said, there's this element because uh, because again, okay, I ran this said play to said defense ten times over the course of the week. So uh, a normal practice week. Uh, if you win, you don't come in Monday, but let's just say Monday, you come in, just kind of get the body right. That might be your big lift of the week, your lower body lift, kind of get your body right. Tuesday is the NFL off day. That's where they hire and fire people. That's first, you know, if you're on the Tuesday, (laughs) yeah. So Tuesday is, is a stressful day for half the team. So then your hard training days, Wednesday and Thursday, Friday is always fast Friday. Or at least in the in the buildings that I was in, that was the thing. Saturday, you have a walkthrough. And then Saturday afternoon is travel day or go to the hotel day, whatever. And then you play on Sunday. So that's an average week, right? So then where was I going with this? So then going into your prep and you have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 
you've ran this play and the coaches have told you this is the one that's going to whatever succeed on this one of 10 <laughs> drives. And you've seen this defense because statistics say that this is the defense. And then you line up, you get in the game and everyone's in different places. New defense. And like when you play in practice, not always, but in most cases, everyone's in fixed positions. Like, okay, I know Wes is to my right. I know Jake's to my left. You get in the game and the guys are walking around on purpose yeah. because that's what they're taught to do. So you can't get a key on who's going where and who's doing what. And being a novice football player, I know like my say my call to Wes is a triple and my call to you is a C. So they're walking around. And I'm just like, triple, C, triple, C. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And the guy next to me is like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's so but it's so much of that. Just like, chill out. They're gonna line up when it's time to go. You've seen enough looks. Trust what you see and execute. And just like the amount of time it took for that conversation to actually make it to the game field is why I'm like, oh, man, it would be nice if I would have played my whole life. <laughs> like, you got to be comfortable when <laughs> you yeah. play the game because it, it is a game. It's as raw and like each play is as raw and free and flows as like as much as any sport. Yeah. But it's also as scripted as you said, a chess match, like mm -hmm. like even like the first what like three or four drives are scripted in a game um, on offense? Yeah, like, like a plan. Yeah, like I've been I've been part of teams where it may be, and they just didn't tell us. And then I've been a part of teams where like the first twenty plays are we run in these twenty yeah. unless something just goes horribly yeah. wrong. Bam, you know the first twenty plays, so you can literally like see the line up on the sideline and everyone on the sideline. Like, oh yeah, this is blah blah blah. But depending like, on how the defense reacts. You're gonna run that play so twenty different ways. Exactly, Your like, job changes twenty. Like, it well, can yeah. Be anything. Well, it's it's like a it's like not that and not, you know I've I've never been to war, but it's just like you go out and then you report. So yeah. it's like you go out. Oh man, they're doing this, and like the guys come in, they're sweating and they're bleeding, and they're like, oh man, so they're doing this, they're doing that, they're doing this. The guys on the radio. Yeah. Okay, guys, we got this. Da -da -da -da, we got to get it done. We got you know two minutes to get this relayed up to the booth, back to the booth, to the coordinators, to the coaches, to the players. Make sure it's good. Okay, we're running that, and then we get out there. And what's the first thing that happens? They don't do what we talk <laughs> <Yeah>. about. <laughs> I mean, just listening to you talk about some stuff is like every dry fire exercise I've ever done. <laughs> it's like you know, you clear it, you do a glass house, or just like some tape on the ground. And it's to practice clearing a house okay when, when the war was mostly uh mobile operations urban terrain people in buildings stuff mm -hmm. like that and that's when you actually like you, you do the same route with the same four guys mm -hmm. every single time and it becomes awkward you become really good how you're going to pie this window and everything and then once you actually do the exercise with some op four or some real people in the yeah. building, it's like you get it. <laughs> we have legs, obviously, but you start shooting, then you just yeah. So, anyways, it started blasting. Right. Like yeah, every uh, Jake, you killed because... four civilians in this exercise, um... dude. It's couldn't be more like it. It's like, and that's where when I first started to play, yeah, it was like come back and report to us all these things you found out. I'm like, I I, I just ran the play. Yeah. Yeah. Your list like, is I, like, my ankle kind of hurts. Yeah, like, I'm, you know, my back's a little sore. Yeah, he kind of hit me in the, well he, he kind of poked me in the eye. And like, they're like, no, like what coverage, what lead, uh, what was he talking about? What was they talking about? I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea. I was trying not to forget that? the play. Yeah. You know who plays yeah. uh, like completely like, Free of all uh, worry and doesn't even have to think. Kiko, Kiko, oh, Kiko yeah. that boy is just playing ball. Like you, you know, like uh, he. Dave's even said that he doesn't really do good in like a super like high structured system because he's oh, such a like that. such a reactionary like, such player, like game player. Like, yeah. But he's played his whole life. Like this boy is yeah. football like, mm -hmm. through and through, and he just loves it. Reacts and like plays his game, and that's like he's just playing the game, yeah. and that's like. That's where you want to be to like be probably the best you can be. Like you gotta be hundred percent. You gotta get there where like you can hear this play. You already like it. You've run through. You know it so like inside and out. You've been doing this game forever, and now you can just like be Kiko. Like yeah. just run through this. Like just feel play it. how you Flow. want. And he like he'll, like we were watching so like uh, I think it was on the him mic'd up. And he was like. Uh, that was a mistake. I wasn't supposed to be there. All the shit he messed up. That's amazing. I mean, and just when you meet him, like you can tell, like that's the kind of guy he is. Yeah, but, he uh, beats to his own drum. I mean, 
I haven't. Okay, so I haven't played against him. Unfortunately, the last time when I was with the Colts and we played the Dolphins when he was there, I was hurt at the time. But it was just so funny trying to prepare for Kiko because <laughs> yeah. it's like, okay, the defense does this. Kiko <laughs> does this. So they were put someone in his jersey. And like, because we used to do it with Troy Polamalu too. So we put like jersey and like hair on, like on top of the, like, it was so funny. Or we put like something and we would just tell that guy like, you go play football. Everyone else, you're in such and such. Yeah. And that's literally how you try and prepare for a guy like him. Because, I mean, yeah, every time we played him, it's like, oh. We just don't know what he's going to do. Like, Kiko gonna he's going to do something <laughs> that's going to just change everything. And not only that, it's going to be like really violent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like it's going to be. Didn't he, Roy Jenkins his way but, to, didn't he knock out one of your buddies? So, if, okay. If that, you, it could have been you. Yeah. What? So what we had happen, he concussed <laughs> no. our running back. No. He concussed one of our linemen and he ruptured my buddy's kidney. Oh, shit. It was like when I say he <laughs> was on a different level, it was like he was playing in fast forward and we were all in play. Like, God. I'll never forget it because I was <laughs> my buddy because he knew I think he knew Kiko. And we had like a, a play of running. It was a running play going to the left. So our running backs kind of running toward the Dolphins sideline. And he's trying to get the edge or the end of where the offensive defense is so he can start to run toward the opposite end zone in an attempt to score. So he's he's coming around the edge, and we're you know, we're on the sideline like, oh yeah, go. His name's Marlon. Go Marlon, go Marlon. <laughs> Boom! You just don't even see it. You just hear it. <laughs> and then he gets up on the sideline. Everyone's like, yeah. And then <laughs> Marlon comes back to the sideline. He's like, whoo! <laughs> Didn't he see him? He was like, I knew he was coming. I heard the feet. <laughs> but man, and then dude, I mean, not even five plays later. He's in the tent. <laughs> he's yeah. in there checking it for concussion protocol. <laughs> and he's got his helmet off. He's like, yeah, he got me. I'm out this game. <laughs> and it was like, so I swear, like, it was one other guy. And then my close buddy, another tight end. Yeah, he was running, like, one of our basic routes. Catches the ball. Kind of tries to make a play up field. And the big thing that defensive guys do. So, I'll say when you... uh get to the NFL, there's certain statistics that you want in order to hit your contract bonuses. So a lot of things for defense are interception and forced fumbles. So a lot of guys you would think are just out there trying to just saw through you, knock you to the ground, beat you up, talk trash. Then there's these handful of guys that are truly special at just getting the ball out of your hands. You know, you'll hear the term like, oh, that guy's a ball hawk. Like if you watch enough football games, you'll hear that term. So what guys do is they pretend like they're going to tackle you and they stand you up so that other people can hit you. It's literally like just getting jumped for yeah. like two seconds. So my buddy and I felt so bad because he came to the sideline and knew he shouldn't have done what he did. But in the middle of the field, you do not throw a stiff arm or put your arm out and try and toss somebody. There's too much going on. Cover the ball. Get down. That's what we're always taught. Unfortunately, he made a quick play, kind of shrugged someone off, lost sense of where he was on the field, threw a stiff arm to the outside, kind of toward the sideline, was not looking in the middle, and Kiko just came max speed. And, I mean, it was the loudest just, like, car wreck of a hit <laughs> right to the kidney. And, yeah, later that day, like, after the game, my buddy's just gray in the face. I'm like, dude, you okay? He's like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm in a lot of pain. He ended up having to get helicoptered to the hospital, and yeah, he had a ruptured kidney. It was, it was bad. <laughs> it the thing was, about Kiko is he's not a mean person. Well, and that's what caught he's me off nice guard. He's the dude in the world. <laughs> yeah, he played. He's an animal. He's and I, I thought because everyone like Joe, you guys, David told me like, oh, Kiko, just wait till you meet Kiko. Yeah. So I'm thinking like, oh, I'm about to meet an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and no, he's just like no, the he most puts on, like. Uh, Funk music. Yeah. <laughs> when he's working out, and he's just grooving. And, like, he's and like just a nice, guys. like, yeah, so holistic cool. thinking, <laughs> yeah. broad, spiritual. Yeah. Like, And I told Chilling. him this face. I'm like, you're just not what I expected. Like, you're, <laughs> you could be further from the guy I thought I was going to be meeting that, like, almost murdered my team. <laughs> like, you're such a nice dude. I'm like, ah, oh, you're strange but i like you it's just yeah, annoying because yeah. <laughs> i want to hate you but you're such a nice guy 
<laughs> that's the thing, you know, like he he got a lot of heat for his uh, shot on Joe Flacco. Oh yeah. But Kiko was just playing football. He like he he would never he would you if you know Stop Kiko, hurts. you know he never no. hurts nobody. He never no. he, he wouldn't try to hurt uh your your tight end buddy, you no. know. But he loves football and he plays it at a hundred and ten percent. Yeah. And if you don't love it as much as Kiko, you're going to be a victim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're either the nail or the hammer. And a lot of times, guys, the nail. Yeah. 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 Kiko stays hammered, man. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Well, uh, do you have uh, – so, like, your training obviously had to change. So, mm-hmm. you're training for football. What Like, what's uh, what's kind of your regimen now? Like, like, like if you were going to tell somebody, uh, mm-hmm. like, like, help somebody out right now. Like, yeah, so – Right now where we're at, um, of course, the big change from basketball to football was more loading, right? So basketball, we actually pushed it, I'd say, at my university, probably a lot harder. Which is unique. Yeah, Yeah, it was very rare. Like, So Coach Larry Nega's big thing was he wanted the team's bench press average to be above 250. His final four team, that was their one rep max as a team was above 250 and they succeeded. So then that was the big thing. Oh, we're going to push. So we actually lifted. Like, I mean, again, that, that ain't much. Right. But for a basketball team and some guys that are sub yeah. 200 pounds and never lifted in their life, really, yeah. it was like a big, you know, everyone all of a sudden had little cuts. And, yeah. you know, and so I being the kind of like addicted to training person that I am, I'm like, oh, then I'm going to be the strongest on the team. That's just a guarantee. Mm-hmm. So that's where I got my bench press up to 365, blah, 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 blah. So then you transition to football where – Basketball is like soccer where you run all day, you train all day, and you lift occasionally. As opposed to football, you lift all the time. You lift heavy, short reps, and then you go on the field. And as opposed to this long, say, three-quarter sprint, it's how fast can you run for like three seconds, and then you have 40 seconds to catch your breath again, and it's another max effort sprint. And when I first switched over, I didn't understand how to sprint. Honestly, that's one of the biggest things I've learned here at Cal strength is I didn't have the muscles I needed necessary to be able to generate that type of force production or the core stability, the hip stability, all those things. So the blessing of being here and I'll just say my training has had like hints of what we have here at Cal strength, but this has been, like what feels comprehensive. Like, yeah, like put it all together. I was lifting very heavy in Miami, power cleaning and Olympic lifting, but I didn't have the training that you guys have from Dave, the guru, the 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 breaking it down to a science. I mean, I felt like when I first got here, I didn't even get to 70 key. Like I was just lifting the bar <laughs> for like I felt like weeks before <laughs> he actually like I ever even got to 200 pounds, let's say. And so Now my training very much Olympic lifting is in some ways the base of my strength output, my force production that translates to the field. Um, And then the accessory work that we do here is to complement that. And then we get on the field. So I lift lower body twice a week, Mondays and Fridays, upper Tuesdays and Thursdays and Wednesday I just do conditioning or yoga something to just nurture my body uh lately it's been more actually route running because I'm just trying to get into a off-season training type of mindset um so yeah now it's I run five days a week and I lift four days a week and take the weekends off it's my time I don't really try and do much over the weekend other than just eat well hydrate well and um that's been pretty much the journey for some time now now like i said the big change between california strength and say other places that i've been and no disrespect they take it down to the you can almost say brutal science (laughs) dave is a very honest person and i respect him for it i know you guys too that's why you guys are here you don't get away with things in this building it's here to train a specific way and to train right and then it's our job as the athletes to take that training and apply it on a yeah. consistent basis. So the joy that I've had in training here and picking up this style of regiment is you guys, honestly, because I had never done Olympic lifting, like real Olympic lifting. 
And when I got here, I was very overwhelmed seeing you guys lift because I'm like, <laughs> I had had a knee surgery in 2017. So, you know, when you get knee surgery, you mess up some of the lower limb, what's the first thing they tell you not to do? Stop squatting. Yeah. Don't you let never, it lift. Most doctors, you'll never lift weights. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, they usually say. just remove <laughs> anything. Yeah. Like, you'll be, you'll be lucky if you ever can cut or squat or anything, walk up steps. So, just... <laughs> Cut it all out, make it real rehab oriented. And I took that to heart because I had never had surgery before. So I'm like, oh, I broke my nose. But uh, yeah. that surgery is like plastic surgery, basically. <laughs> um, so this is my, my first time recovering. And so when I got here, all of that training that I had done at the start that was making me effective, I had been told it was a bad idea. So then in my mind, I'm injuring, literally injuring myself. If I pick up these habits and then I come here and I tell Dave, OK, you know, I, I got I got the knee I'm working on, blah, blah. And the first thing he says, all right, grab the bar. We're going to start. <laughs> out. <laughs> and my face flushed and I getting like literally Scary. like shaky, nervous because I'm like, oh, man, I, I, you know, I'd reached out to some of my co colleagues in the NFL and they had just sworn by. Cal strength. So I heard about this place from Robert Turbin, who I think you guys have met running back. He's with the Seahawks now. And then um, I have a close relationship with Andrew Luck. He reached out to Zach Ertz. Yeah. Zach told him, hey, come to Cal strength. I know Zach's a household name here. So I'm coming here like, OK. And then I had heard Austin Hooper was here and I'm hearing all these names. I walk in, I see the jerseys. I see your, you know, the you got the play, all this stuff. I'm like, OK, well, they have success here. Like. That definitely makes me feel confident. A lot of people have trusted in this gym. And then, yeah, that's the first thing I'm told is like, well, you're going to power clean. Yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. this could be. Blow my shit yeah, out. I'm like, I'm play ball just... again. I'm there walk. Oh, yeah. Like I hadn't <laughs> I hadn't front squatted in like forever and then and then back squatted in like three years and then power, all that stuff. And at least three years or let's say two to three years. And um I mean, it's been the best thing that I could have ever That's asked awesome for. And the here. first thing I did when I got here was, I on, and I know you guys don't know this, but I, <laughs> it goes back to the same thing. I studied you guys. Like, I would study you guys in training here, and then I would go home and watch your guys' Instagram stories and your Instagram videos and just try and figure out, like, how to Olympic lift effectively, consistently. Because the thing I noticed, you guys come in here, you lift these insane weights multiple times a day. And I've never seen you guys pull up for injury. And I thought that was like, especially coming from a surgery where in my mind, I'll never be the same again. And hearing this person who everyone trusts and like, and he's telling me like, yeah, you'll be right where you left off. Like, you'll be fine. You just need to do these things. Yeah. So I'm like, how do I get there? You know, it goes to the same thing. So I, I'm when I, I'm not kidding. When I literally say I'd sit in my at my house with my fiance and just watch your guys' videos, watch what you guys, not uh, the snatches. I mean, I even though I know I'm not snatching, I just wanted to figure out like how the hell are you guys lifting so much all the time? Like you, it's not like you guys come in here and just like ah, we're gonna cut it in half today. <laughs> like no, a training day is a training day, and that's actually how I learned was just studying you guys and then. After a while, then I was like, oh, OK, I can I can do this weight. I can do that weight. And then now I have like a comfortable base. And the coolest thing that's been so I've been here. I started training here um, middle end of July of last year. And when I got here, I like I said, I couldn't do all those things. And I haven't had knee pain in months. I haven't that's had awesome, man. anything, anything. That would inhibit my body from 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 competing at the highest level. I've had nothing that's even ha like crept up in my mind in so many months that like it was like after basically once I got the patterning down, it was like the pain went away, and that's I'm like, oh okay, so this is I'm finding out that what I've been told is not correct. Right, well, yeah, and then exactly your body learns like so you have to teach your body how to move explosively, how to drive, like what muscles to use, how to fire them. Mm -hmm. And if you just give all that up because you hurt something, your body's going to forget. It's yeah. going to turn that shit off and it's not going to let you use it yeah. because it, it's safer to just kill it. You know what I mean? 
Oh yeah, and that's that was my time out in the field with with Joe, with Joe Mar. We're out there, and so when I first started here, when we started lifting, um, I'm like, uh, I need a condition. I mean, <laughs> a football player. I'm not a lifter. Just being sarcastic, and they're like, "Well, you're not strong enough to run yet." And I'm like, "What the fuck? You're not strong enough to run? I was running before I got here." Yeah. And then we got out there, and we did some just bare bones of like the mechanics of how to sprint properly and effectively and i mean i'm getting back spasms and <laughs> everything my <laughs> hips locking my psoas is tight my feet hurt we're just marching <laughs> i'm like why is this so hard and that's what i learned exactly what you're talking about is your body likes to follow the path of least resistance yeah. so and that's what we all that's the point of our of our training is to show the brain to tell the body you can pretty much do whatever you want yeah. stop fighting me on it mm -hmm. and then there are days where you genuinely need to lay off right. but in most cases you can break that barrier by just pushing through the training and trusting the training and that's that's what my journey here has been and that's what my regimen is now and now i i mean if anyone asks me oh where are you training what do you do i'm like i got the best place if you are willing to push your body to the brink Come to Northern California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's, that, that's, that's such so a cool. testament just to like, I mean, I feel like you're at heart, you're still willing to be a student. You know, you get your notepad out, you're willing to learn things, you're, you, you're willing to uh, listen to someone yeah. and, and, and take that shot because, you know, you have a doctor telling you you should never squat again. And Dave's saying that's the first thing you need to do. <laughs> that takes a certain level of, you know, trust, but also just in being able to learn something and, and reason yeah. and be logically like, okay, well, it's just, it's just 45 pounds. Let me try it. Yeah. And you go from there and you can teach yourself these things. And I think that's a huge testament to your success is just having that mentality. <laughs> you could go into weightlifting. Honestly, I don't really <laughs> joke about it, but you could uh, give Lasha a run for the <laughs> It's yeah, like that, it's, man. Uh, it's a couple of his time. videos. Uh, <laughs> like, it's hard to like be in a position, like you get a surgery and you get this rehab, and then this really smart, well-educated person, it's like, hey, no more, don't stay off the weights. Mm -hmm. don't, don't be touching the weights. Don't lift anything heavy. Um, you, you can't do it. It's bad for your knee. And you're like, okay, well, i got to trust this guy. He's been in school, you know, until he was 30-plus. Yeah. Like, he knows his shit. Yeah. But yeah. then what you actually realize is that this guy's never worked out a day in his life. And the fact that, like, most doctors don't even they won't understand that if you do something you get better at it yeah. so like even like post-op you maybe can only squat 45 pounds and maybe you can't go all the way down but if you do that for a month mm -hmm. now you can maybe maybe you're at 65 pounds but you're going to a full range of motion yeah so you've already improved your situation and then you can improve from that situation you will continue to improve if you continue to to work on it so like this like cookie cutter idea that your rehab has to be like what they say it is and your your situation is what they say it is it's not like no like uh i i had this uh this older uh the middle aged lady you know just a normal lady that was passionate about weightlifting and she had a really old uh, th like she tore her shoulder up pretty bad okay right so yeah. she had she finally had to get her surgery gets her surgery and then, uh, you know, it's supposed to be like a year long recovery process and you're back to normal. Okay. And she's going to PT and she's like, she's like, I'm bored at PT. Like the things we're doing are so easy. I'm doing all my homework. I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to get online because all, all basically 90% of PT, they're just, they have a spreadsheet made out. Yeah. And you just yeah. follow the same regimen yeah, as everyone else. Two, you're doing this. No mm -hmm. matter if you're if you're a super freak athlete like yourself, like a <laughs> like a, a, a mate like just a gift from God, like <laughs> humbly like, you know, a very special person. Like your knee rehab is gonna be the same as, you know, some somebody that's never exercised or played a sport. They're gonna yeah. follow the same protocol. Um and they're gonna play it safe. And realistically you're going to be ready before, you know, a normal person was. And, and my my client, she was ready at six months to be as good as she ever had been oh, at wow. weightlifting. Yeah. She was already back. And it was just because, like, here's your protocol. This is what they're going to do. Make sure that you're completely 
comfortable and strong and capable at one before you move to the next. Yeah. She crushed her sheet. We like stayed working out. We were very like careful and safe and mm-hmm. thoughtful about it. But uh, we did some things that we weren't allowed to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, things yeah. that we were told not to do. Like yeah. we're moving through like snatch stuff, doing a little bit of strength work. She's pulling a sled. Like whatever. We're just being safe and careful and yeah. thoughtful about it. And her recovery was super fast and she's better before, you know, six months before she ever should have been. So it's excellent, man. It's awesome. But that, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you, like, it's just a shame that, you know, you get that kind of information that you can't uh, weight lift and that impedes you from having and for like furthering a career, you know, like Definitely. If, if you never make it somewhere where they're like, dude, we can fix you and you can be strong and powerful again. Like, you're not going to be because no. you trust in this guy. Yeah. You know, and that's not on you because you you tend to trust the people <laughs> that are in these positions and you're yeah. supposed to and you should be able to. But you just have to, like, understand that, you know, a doctor isn't they've not probably been in a gym. Most of them haven't even been in a they're gym. Not time to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they've been studying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They've been in the books, bro. They don't, they don't necessarily know. And if you haven't experienced like that, like zero to like Adaptation. improvement, yeah. then you don't understand. Yeah. But what they would, I think what they'd realize is that the body is as like uh malleable as a brain like as much as you can like teach your brain to Mm -hmm. like do and learn and and remember you can teach your body to be like strong and capable and uh improve it and it's just like it's really cool that you were able to find this place and that you're now like comfortable like with with uh being strong like you're comfortable like trying to like further your position and you're feeling better you're feeling good and that's just uh that's super i mean this is awesome man yeah thank you yeah the, the, that's where you learn pt is designed to get you back to activities of daily living just being a functional adult exactly not being a professional athlete right. there's like yeah like you said there's the phase that like yes now i can walk up the steps or i can grab something off the top shelf but there's also this like a large amount of other things that I'm really trying to tap into yep. and I'm being told it's a bad idea. Well, like, yeah, I mean, life is taking risks. So I understand I'm running a risk, but like you say, you, you look at this lab coat and you say, okay. Uh, yeah. You got glasses and a lab coat on. You're yeah. smarter than me. I got to you. millions of people. You clearly know better than I, because I got web MD and that's, you know, that's my degree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lupus. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's more dangerous though than doing squats and cleans is not doing them not and dangerous. playing your game, dude. Yeah. Going out on the football field week. Uh, like that's the story of my last season playing exponentially <laughs> more dangerous. And, yeah. uh, so like your last season, um, you got you didn't. There was a physical. Okay, so the last season I played uh, was 2018 with the Colts, and it was it had its highs and lows. Yeah. One of the major things being is my leg wasn't up to par. Right. I was battling some swelling from the recovery, and then because of that again this is a job based off merit if i if i'm not they always say the biggest thing you can have in football is availability just are you you know healthy willing and able to play the sport and then obviously know what you're doing and i just had times where i just i I physically don't feel strong enough i mean i'd never been up until this point i had never been out in a game situation and thought to myself Ooh, I'm gonna get downfield. <laughs> like that's a crazy yeah, thought. Yeah. Like imagine going to lift and you're literally like, I'm saying just a bar, and you're like, I hope, I hope, I hope I'm okay. I hope the bar yeah. l- like my leaves the ground. Career before coming here, actually. What, was it really? <laughs> like, I'm gonna clean this, and my patella tendon's going to explode. <laughs> it's gonna yeah, and it was up. it was just that was the same for my leg. It's just like, all right, I'm gonna sprint. And Help me, God! Don't blow it up. Yeah, <laughs> please. No snipers. Yeah, <laughs> please. No, please. Let's just hope nothing else, you know, happens. To so now, I'm here, and yeah, it's the last thing I think about. I'm like confident. Yeah, let's go. Let's run all day. Let's lift heavy. Let's whatever. I mean, I still have my process because that's who I am, but that fear was playing into all of these other stresses that we've already talked about that I've kind of shared with you guys that goes on in the building, you know, and 
one of the other stresses I didn't really allude to is when you aren't a contract set investment with a NFL franchise, you are expendable. Yeah. It's expendable as it gets. And those Tuesdays are scary. And I used to have like the Colts app on my phone and it goes roster update for the Colts because they oh, have to submit them by 4 p.m. And I had to get it off my phone because it was literally to the point like, so true. oh, it's sickening. I mean, and on top, these are people that you've personally met, got to know, and then their life's just changed. Even if it's minute, it's still changing. So, and that's a stress. It's your as, friends. It's not just you. Yeah. Too. So I had kind of gotten to a point where that wasn't a concern anymore. I'd had some success. And now I got this knee and I'm like, kind of feeling okay. And then that season, it would be like, play the game. I get cut, I get brought back, then I play, and then I get cut, then I get brought back, and I play. And it was like that the majority of the year. Luckily, I actually had one of my better seasons. I feel very fortunate for those in the building who trusted in me, especially on the offense, to give me opportunities, despite what was going on kind of off the field. Um, but yeah, it was like this constant fear where like I'm – I did feel very good about my positioning with the team. And I understand that until this gets better, that's gone. Mm -hmm. Like this feeling that like I'm a staple in the franchise and they are invested in my future. When I took myself out of it, which is the hardest thing to do and say like, what if I'm the GM and I'm looking at this as one of my players? And then I'm like, well, it makes sense. I mean, it's a business, you know, and you're essentially like a stock. You're either going up or going down. If you're going down, I'm going to sell you so I don't lose out on a you know a potential other investment and so i'm like i need to get my stock back up yeah. you know literally i need to get better so that when they look at me on the tape they say, yeah, that's our guy and that's where it was very bittersweet up and down um and then 2019 they basically told me look unfortunately until you get healthy you're you're not gonna be a part of this franchise you know, thank you for the opportunity. I was there for five years, which I did not realize was such a big deal. And so, again, being in the building, seeing all the hiring and firing, the fact that I, had, I was all of the draft picks of my class were gone before I left. Mm -hmm. Like, that's crazy. So that's why I'm like, wow, this is how cool. So that's why even I look at today, if I never play another down of football, I still feel extremely fortunate for all of the things that I've experienced because I can pass down this information to young, co yeah. you know, the young folks. But. I also understood that to get back to that level of trust, I have to get healthy. I ha and that's where a conversation I used to have a lot with some of my teammates is like the transition from college to pro is it went from we believe in you to you need to believe in yourself because now it is your business. Your yeah. business is your body. So if you don't invest, like TJ was saying, then that's it. Yeah. No one else is pulling for you anymore. Right. Like yeah. that, that aspect of things gone. It's out the window. Now you are an entity. You're trying to earn your keep. They're not giving you keep. And that's, that's what's been the big thing here is, and why I've been so uh, committed being here is because I finally feel like my pains are gone, my aches, my whatevers. And now I know when I get in front of another franchise, whenever that moment comes, they're going to be surprised because Teams have not seen me healthy in now some time. And I went through that rocky road. And what happened is I had gone, like I got waved toward the end of the cold season and the Saints picked me up. And I was just struggling. Yeah. But I was just like, hey, new opportunity. You know, going from Andrew Luck to Drew Brees, like what could be better? They were they had won like, I don't know, however many games in a row. Like, wow. And then I had the big humbling thing. Yeah, they looked at my knee and they're like, dude, your knee is in bad shape. And I'm like, yeah, I know. But I've been playing through it. Yeah. I've been getting my knee drained and all. I'm like, yeah, yeah. so? They're like, no, we're like, you don't get it. Like, you can't be here. You're not healthy enough. And that's when I was like, oh, shit. They, so don't, nah. they don't want you to blow your knee up on their dime because exactly. then they owe they you until you're yeah. fixed. Exactly. You're a Lambo with a, with a donut. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Perfect way of putting yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you can only go 55. You know, <laughs> yeah. It's just going to blow up. <laughs> yeah. And, and so then what happened, let's just say we fast forward to after the year <laughs> um, and I started to resume some of my training. I could run at like 90%, but if I wanted to go 95 or say a hundred, it was like, 
something mechanically would be off. And what I learned was it was my lack of strength. So like anytime I try and hit it, so I got signed by the Oakland Raiders and I, I went out there and I was feeling better and he was doing better, significantly better, but I still wasn't quite strong enough. And I thought, oh, I just need to lose weight. Everyone told me if you take pounds of pressure off that like yields health. <laughs> It's magic. Yeah, it's magic. Yeah, <laughs> which like it's it, weightlifting. You go up, and get help. <laughs> and so I show up there, and I've been playing at like below two fifties. I show up there. I'm two thirty nine, bright eyed, bushy tailed. Wow. Let's magic. do it. Of course, the first thing I find out, I don't have, I can't hit anybody. I, I don't have enough power to be definitive in my position. My position does require blocking and pass protecting, and you need to have strength. And then I would go out and run my routes. And that's what I had been quoted as, as a, a route running tight end. But I'm like, I'm running as fast as I can. And I'm like, why is everyone? Normally, I just run past everyone. I'm like, why is he still in front of me? I'm like, this sucks. It's like really hard to get open. And I'm like, we're not like, I know this is a route I win all the time. I ended up getting cut early in training camp. And I came back. Like I trained a little bit here. Fun, you know, foundational stuff. I got cut and it ended up being the biggest blessing because since then I've been here every day diagnosing how to fix me. And I didn't realize how much work I had actually needed because I had gone that long without real strength training. Yeah. And now I'm back to the point where I said I throw caution to the wind, do whatever the hell I want. And I know like I'm not going to swell or have all this pain yeah. or all these inhibiting factors. And then now it's just about maintenance. And that's what. That's what all of our training is, right? You, you, you max out, your body responds in said ways, you fix them, and then you try and see if you can go 1% past that. You just keep doing that, and you look up, and you're like, yeah, I'm all of a sudden, I'm freaking beast, and I'm you know, crazy strong. I remember we were on the field, I think it was last week, and I was just talking to you, like, what are some of the things you think about when you're running? And you're just saying, like, you know, I've never had the core no. running. I've never known how to break. No. And so it's exciting thinking about, you know, when you felt your best when you were in the league, you were probably only at 80% of what you're capable of. Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah, the next opportunity you get, we're going to see this, like, whole new athlete. Like, you've learned all these things. You're yeah. a little closer to that 100. Like, yeah. That's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm ex- I mean, I've been excited for a while. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the virus and everything's kind of slowed things down. But, yeah, I've been – that's been a, a big conversation, I'd say, in my household. is just, like, my fiance asked me because she saw me. Like, we met when I was rehabbing. like literally right post-surgery we started to kind of date and hang out and so she's seen me which i feel bad because i'm like you you didn't get to see like when I was, like i swear i'm good like, like i'm actually good i swear i'm good like yeah i could show you youtube videos and, but that's like i swear i can actually do this i can run fast i'm strong like just just give me some time so it's cool because now she's kind of seen me come full circle and now she, you know, she asks, how you feel? I'm like, I feel like fucking fantastic. <laughs> and it's just like such a better conversation than how's your knee doing? Yeah. Right. You know, you think you're going to make it this week. How much are they draining you or whatever to now? It's just like, what's your pain? Like? Yeah, exactly. Pain level? Yeah, yeah. We're like, those conversations have been gone for so long now that now we can almost like joke like, man, you remember when I was using the game ready and the knee sleeves and the this is and that trying to drain fluid and blah, blah. And like now I just come home, eat healthy and sleep eight hours yeah. and wake yeah. up and I'm like, great piss excellence. Like it's-, <laughs> it's so it's crazy that that was just a, a product of weakness and you like. Yeah. Then the the it was was such a simple like recipe to like get back on top, and you're around all these like you know these super high level professionals Mm -hmm. that should be able to give you this this recipe, and you just like you're just going just going hungry, you know, like Mm -hmm. trying to like you spin your wheels. You're like I I know what I can't do. I know I can't get in the gym right now and work on this sucker, but I I gotta you know I gotta run as fast as I can on the field. When you think about that, just like now looking back, like does it? It doesn't even make sense no. that you should be that a doctor would be like, "Hey, you can't lift weights or or exercise your knee, but it's okay if you go out to the football field and run as fast as you can yeah. and crash your body into shit." You know what I mean? Like it's and so, stop on a dime. It's so like, stupid. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's literally it's it's ignorant. Like that's yeah. just so dumb you to can't like do the one thing. 
right. that has gotten you to actually get better. Yeah. Is what a doctor says. So, yeah. So. And that's where, again, it's been such a blessing. And then to kind of go through the physical bouts of like, you know, you get a big body response when you, if say you took six months off of squatting, I took two years off of squatting yeah. and like my first couple of squats and then got a little bit stronger and I got on the field and it was like, I had jet fuel yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah. It was like, whoa, yeah. like I have no self-control. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you jam, you That's literally like the last, I mean, it's, it's felt like that for a while now, but at first, yeah, it was like, Okay, now I have I've like tapped into something that I've needed. Now I need to figure out how to like control it mm -hmm. and use it when necessary and then use it in the right times. And that's been like the fun of the training now is trying to figure out like, okay, we're back to status quo. Now let's not only because that's always been my big thing is the reason why I felt so confident in switching sports. So We'll rewind a little bit to my rookie year. So one of the, the ways I learned was watching Reggie Wayne taking my notes. And then I asked Jimmy Graham, like, hey, man, like, how did you know, how did you get your mojo? And he was like, yeah, one easy thing to do is uh, just watch out the tight ends. I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes total sense. You know, because it's just at the time it's so overwhelming. So it's yeah. like the last thing I thought was like, watch someone else who's just not running our offense. <laughs> yeah, like, just, seat, right? yeah, just right. like. Or go watch games like go watch tape so what i did is i like went through all like on madden and looked like top tight ends okay these names and i took like 10 guys and i just asked like our video guys hey let me get every single time they were targeted whether they caught it or not just every single time the ball has been thrown to them as far back as you can go till now because i'll just watch this and that's what i did is i had like Antonio Gates, Jimmy Graham, Travis Kelsey, Gronk, all these cats. And I just had this huge file and it would be like their 2017 catches. And, you know, these guys get targeted hundreds and hundreds of times. So I would just I, and I took my time because I, I did it over the whole year. And I would just watch like for the first five minutes and then work to five to ten and then ten to fifteen and just figure out like how these guys get successful. And that's been like. That was like earth shattering yeah. just seeing because every guy's different. And that's where I actually got my confidence into the sport because I watched them and I'm like, they're not doing anything I feel like I can't do. And when I would watch NBA players in that moment, studying them, I'm like, I would never do any of the <laughs> stuff that they're doing. That trick shot off one foot floating through, like I would never do that. And then I'd watch these guys and I'm like, I know I, I've ran that, I've caught that, I've, I can do that play, I've made this play, whether there's in practice or whatever, but I'm like, so I know I can compete, not just make a roster, but be a force. And that's been the cool thing is, Guys like Austin Hooper have been here who I went from Jimmy Graham, who was the highest paid tight end in the league, to now I'm with Austin, yeah. Yeah. which is a weird coincidence. But I've gotten a chance to be around the two highest paid tight ends in the recent generation of football. And when I see these guys, I don't see them doing something I can't do. Mm -hmm. So I know I just need to keep working, to stay focused. And just trust in my abilities. And now I have this plan and, all, you know, all these other good things and my little process. And now it's just I'm healthy again. And then it's just getting back. And then that's going to be the same thing. I'm getting into the building. Yeah. Notepad. <laughs> find somebody in the building that's successful. I'm like, all right, I'm just start watching this guy. And that's I mean, it's it's so funny how that's been. It's stemmed. And that's why I wanted to start with talking about my high school. But it's stemmed from just like those learning lessons of just ask questions and just take the time to like dig deeper than what is you're seeing in front of you and figure out fundamentally why this is happening and then how to achieve it for yourself. Yeah. Like that base way of thinking, I feel like it just applies to all things, like yeah. even relationships. Like, you know, you're talking to your woman and she's saying, she's oh, out. yeah, well, she's just like, <laughs> hey, well, I mean, think about it. She's just like, hey, you know, you're not doing these things. Well, most guys were just like, yeah, 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 all right. But if you actually like, she said this, she said that, she said this, and then just apply it a little bit. Yeah. All of a sudden, your relationship just so changes. Yeah. And she's like, wow, you're whatever, this, this, this thing. And I'm like, well, 
Yeah, I wrote it down. You wrote it down? I'm like, well, you told me it wasn't working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this, it's so simple. It's and, and we all can do this. This isn't like a, you know, like some magic trick. It's just putting pen to paper with your thoughts and addressing something. And you can only speak your language, right? So you speak in your language, how it hits your brain. And then start to slowly apply it. Mm-hmm. That's going to apply to the job world. Like I said, to relationships, friendships, you know, everything. I've, or at least that's, I feel very strongly that You're way. You're right, man. Yeah. That's like, like I think uh, everybody's got a little something they could learn yeah. from uh, from you. Dude. And it's not, it's, not, it's it. earth shattering, but it's not complex. No. It's so simple. Yeah. We're just sitting here. I'm in, I know I'm inspired. Man. Like, <laughs> like, for real. Like, this is like, I can guarantee I'm going to, I'm going to watch this podcast multiple times. Because oh. there's so many things you've said that have either like I resonate with and apply to my weightlifting career, my athletic career. Mm -hmm. Um, Man, I'm, I'm, this is a favorite. (laughs) I'm excited for this to come out. I'm excited for everyone to be able to see this, but at the same time, I'm holding this shit close to me (laughs) and I'm going to listen to it multiple times because there's like, there's just so much good (laughs) nuggets of just perfect advice and wisdom that like, (laughs) The first thing is you got to write it down on a notepad. It's just it starts. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's, it's like I said, and I, I've, again, this is just a uh, observation, but just as men, we don't, and it's something I struggle with myself. We don't speak up enough about say vulnerable things. Like I don't know how to do yeah. blank. That is like a hard conversation in just the male species. So if it's that uncomfortable, Start to write that down. Yeah. Get it out somehow. Because if you don't address these things, it can turn into an opportunity missed, which I've experienced. Or it can end up being something great. Like you go from doing something you've never done before to something that's changed. Like football's changed my entire life. If I didn't play football, I would have never met my fiance. I would have never had enriching time with my family i would have lived in europe like so many things have changed and it just went back to that same fundamentals i just took the time to ask myself what's really going on and how can this become more than what it is today because i feel like as humans we're always chasing growth but growth can sometimes it's like it's overwhelming like everyone just tells you you're supposed to grow like you're supposed to be so big you're supposed to just especially as an adult, as a man, you're supposed to just have it figured out and you just provide because you were just born with this lion heart, <laughs> you know, but, and, 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 it's, and then we sit around and then, you know, at least for me, I'm just like, I don't want to do any of these things. <laughs> but the one thing I know I can do is if I actually write down what I don't know I'm going to do, it's going to remind me that, I, hey, I, oh yeah, I still need to get that answered question, you know, that question answered. And then I can become task oriented. I can have a process. And then before I know it, I've picked up a skill. Mm-hmm. I've picked up a talent. I can now have someone that I can share this with. And then it's so funny when we start talking as men. And it's like, oh, yeah, we're all experiencing the same things. It's yeah. just written in your language. Yeah. And boom, you're like, I've, I've grown. I didn't even realize I grew. And I, it just happened. Level up. Right? <laughs> it's, <laughs> I think it's just it's, it's cool that in human nature we have the capability to do that. Yeah. And that's where I just been trying to tap into that in the NFL. And then obviously when sports is over, that's a whole nother challenge I'm, you know, taking on now is just trying to figure out like, how can I take this wealth of knowledge and do something to benefit somebody? I don't, it doesn't matter if it's tens of thousands, if it's just one kid, one kid in a gym, some kid at Safeway, just give them something that will make them say, oh man, I can do better than what I'm doing right now. I feel like that, that that's all that matters. <laughs> Man, I, we got it. Yo, Adam, we need to fast track this episode. <laughs> upload this one. I know we've already filmed like eight, but. <laughs> we yeah, got it. I awesome. think we got in on that, man. That's so like. That's so awesome, man. Thanks for being like an inspiration yeah. and like yeah. a beacon of light, man. I, I know you're going to do like great things, whether it's next season in the league or like you're something beyond that. <laughs> 2024 Olympics. Like, so really like the, where you're at now, like you're, you're unstoppable, whatever, yeah. like whatever you want to do, like you're going to, you're going to get it done. So Absolutely. thanks for inviting me guys. This yeah. was, this was awesome. I really appreciate being a part of it. Thanks, brother. All right. See y'all.